chair. Good morning. This is the Gary Sansing Public Forum for November 16th, 8.30 a.m. Please turn your cell phone to the vibrate, silence, or off setting. The Gary Sansing Public Forum is intended for matters not included on the agenda for the upcoming Board of County Commissioners meeting. Citizens wishing to address the board on the agenda should sign up to speak to such item at the regular Board of County Commissioners meeting. Speakers shall refrain from abusive or profane remarks disruptive outbursts, protests, or other conduct which interferes with the orderly conduct of the Gary Sensing Public Forum. Each speaker is limited to three minutes unless otherwise determined by the chairman to allow sufficient time for all speakers. First speaker is Margaret Hostetter. I'm wearing black in mourning for the fact that the A-plus heritage tree and the 16 other protected trees on the A-plus storage um, development order are going to be removed before the case has been really fully heard in court. Remember, we will remember the A-plus storage heritage oak. It's symbolic. It was the perfect specimen, 85 inches, the largest heritage tree that the county arborist had ever measured. She described it as awesome, absolutely, you know, perfect. And our code does protect trees in these circumstances, even though our code for tree ordinance is very weak. But the word today to remember is consequences. There are going to be consequences to this action for a lot of people in the past and going forward. Engineers have a license. Professional engineers have an association that regulates them to make sure they're ethical, they're honest, and they put out valid information. They're engineers. There will be consequences. The staff, your employees, or Mr. Marino's employees, who you have a great deal of influence over, there will be consequences. When the staff has not abided by our ordinances, or told the truth, and so forth. Inspectors, we have inspectors in this county hired to do certain things, inspect. And many times, in the limited amount of time I had available as one old lady going to some of these developments to kind of review what is happening with trees, I found glaring, obvious, big mistakes that the engineers and the developers had made, like bulldozing buffers, wetland buffers, bulldozing them, not putting in a second entrance, a fire safety entrance, not planning for the traffic light, which was to have been installed by the developer at his expense, not to mention other things. And there are other people who will have consequences. I've made a public record request now almost two months ago for simply minutes. Minutes are to be kept forever. Minutes in this case of the Board of Adjustment, which are basically one page. The Board of Adjustment has maybe 10 meetings a year, and I'm specifically looking for the minutes to the uh, appeals hearings they've held. I've been given a stall, and I've been told I have to pay $276 in order to get these minutes. This is outrageous. I've contacted the state's attorney's office because you are supposed to provide for a reasonable cost and within a reasonable time documents, certainly minutes. And right. these minutes may show you, something very serious. And thank you, Mr. Marino, for asking your wife to get me those minutes today. Thank you. 
Megan Walters, followed by Joanne Peel. Good morning, commissioners. I really hate being like first thing. Um, I'm on restriction from politics, so all I can talk about is myself. But um, I, I, I'm a fourth generation local Pensacolian. And um, my parents and my grandparents worked here. My dad was a deputy. I had a dad who was a firefighter. Um, you know, I grew up at, I went to PCA, I went to Tate, and I grew up at the Brownsville Revival, and that shaped me. Um, I went on the Mercy ship, done college here. I was a firefighter at EMT. I was a 911 operator here. I worked Life Light. I'm a mom of four beautiful kids. And um, next week, I will be married to my husband for 21 years, or we'll be together. But this year, I took the year off to take care of myself. Um, a lot of things that have happened to me, you know, um, going into burning buildings. I have a bad back. I have bad hips. Um, earlier this year, um, a cyst was found on my brain. Um, thank God it's gone. And I made it through the month of October, and I didn't have to go to the ER. Um, the one thing that um, Steve Harvey said recently that really spoke to me was loyalty has an expiration date. And sometimes we let people last longer in our lives after their expiration date has already come. And, um, you know, I, Commissioner Barry, you have been a worthy adversary to me over the past year. All of you commissioners, I've had one-on-one -on -one conversations with y'all. Um, some of y'all, it hasn't been so nice. Um, some of you I've come to with corruption that is going on in the county. And um, being that I'm on restriction from politics till my health is cleared and everything. Um, there's other people that are working on it. And I just pray and hope that y'all would see the light and that y'all would hear the stuff that the citizens are saying to you before somebody has to go to the ethics committee. And um, thank you for your time. And I pray for y'all all the time because you are our leaders and you are the ones who are appointed for us. So um, whether I like you or not, I'm always praying for you because my Bible says to bless those that curse you. I hope y'all have a great day. Thank you, Megan. Joanne Peel, followed by Mike Kilmer. Good morning. Um, my name is Joanne Peel, and I live in the Sherwood community on the west side. And um, we have a park. It's uh, Gene Pickerel Park, and from um, the Hurricane Sally, uh, a fence along the walking path was blown down. Parts of it were blown down. And we've asked the uh, Parks and Recreation if they could repair the fence, um, because it's, it looks terrible, number one, and it's just not really a good, um, it is a safety concern because there's a chain link fence behind it with, you know, the spikes up. And um, I've tried to work through parks and recreation. And um, I recently emailed um, Mr. Rhodes and asked him for a time or date of, for completion. And um, he in turn emailed um, Adam Reed for a date, and I haven't heard anything back. He didn't respond to my email. Um, and I'd like to know, Mr. Marino, I called your office also, and Roxanne referred me to, uh, back to Parks and Recreation. Um, you know, it's a community park. It's, we have families and children that use it. You know, it's not spectacular, but it serves its purpose in our community. And I'd really appreciate it if you could sure. uh, give me some feedback on that. Director Rhodes is right there in the back, and he'll get with you in just a few seconds. He will? He's right there with his hand up. So he'll, he'll meet Thank with you. Thank you very much. Yep. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Mike Kilmer followed by Charles Crutton. Hey, and thank you for having me. Uh, 2818 West Jackson Street. Um, <clears throat> in Brownsville, we're always thinking about Cervantes Street. 
the spine of our neighborhood. Um, as you probably know, when it was four laned in 79, it kind of divided the neighborhood in two and <clears throat> killed the business district, which we've been working to revitalize since then. Now, what I'm experiencing with the single lanes of traffic while they're doing the construction is a lot more comfortable. I actually I'm, would rather get on it now than previously because you just get in line and move at a comfortable pace, 25, 30 miles an hour, and get through it. In terms of walking on it, you can actually have a conversation. You're, you don't have to yell over traffic. So what I'm asking of you guys is two things. One, uh, Christine Fanchi is amazing. We probably won't have her forever. So I hope you will green light and everything and anything that you can that she wants to do. And two, from a civic perspective, we need to figure out what should happen there because I don't know the engineering. Um, and if you had what I wanted, you guys would be like, this is too weird. Um, so can it be added to an agenda? So you know, I will engage all the people that are, are kind of in the community that are looking at it and say, let's get out, let's talk about this, let's see what we can do. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Okay. Thanks, Mike. I will say that you know, I, I, I eat in Brownsville a lot because uh, you know, there's a lot of good food in Brownsville. Um, and uh, one thing I've noticed that with the traffic, you actually alluded to it a little bit, that uh, running uh, that road down to one lane, which is more or less what the condition is during construction, um, has more or less given us a beta test of what the road diet would look like. Um, and, you know, I've been talking for some time that, you know, I was concerned about the road diet because of the impact it would have on Jackson and Avery. Um, and what we're seeing is that, you know, my fears, well, you know, certainly uh, reasonable, um, didn't really pan out. Uh, they, we have not seen a, uh, a, a huge uptick in traffic on Jackson and Avery. Um, so, you know, I think that, uh, that citizens of Brownsville who, who wanted the road diet uh, should absolutely be looking at this as, as pretty much proof positive that it would work. Um, and the amount of traffic that flows through Brownsville uh, can do so safely uh, in a two lane. So uh, hopefully that discussion will come back up um, and the people of Brownsville should continue to push for it. Thank you. A amen. <clears throat> uh, can we get it on an agenda here? Mike, I don't even know if that's, because uh, I'm, I'm going to be supportive of it. You just heard Commissioner Underhill said he's going to be supportive. Fantastic. I think you should get with Christine and begin to, and I'll be a part of the neighborhood meetings as we work on the plan. There's no sense in bringing it in the okay. agenda, but uh, she's nodding her head. Joy's here, and administrator hears it. Everything that we need to do to push it, to get that moving, is what we're going to do. All right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, do we have a whole bunch of speakers this morning, or are we, are we doing all right? Is it? All right. So, yeah, Christine, I would like to, to kind of further that discussion. If, if anything I said there is inaccurate, I mean, that's, that's me ob observing uh, as an individual. Um, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on, the, uh, on, on you know, what this construction has done for that I'm discussion. I'm going to you guys to it. Thanks. I have to. Thank you. Please appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Uh, Charles Krupnik, followed by Paul Warren. Yeah, good morning. Uh, Charles Krupnik, 14500 River Road, uh, Perdido, uh, Pensacola, Florida, and president of the Perdido Key Association, uh, speaking about uh, Escambia County redistricting. You know, as we enter the apparent final weeks of the redistricting process, you know, I want to continue to express my opposition to the proposed shift of Perdido Key from District 2 to District 1. As my colleagues and I from PKA have pointed out, uh, it does fail the logic test, that's the starting point for discussions, to reduce the area and hence population of District 1, should begin with a plan to add Perdido Key in, in the Interary Peninsula to District 1. District 1 already has a lot going on, and many of us on Perdido Key believe we will be better served remaining in District 2. Once the move was accepted, other changes could be made to balance the district populations and lock in the decision, but I hope it can still be reversed. The reasons given for the change, in my view, uh, seem weak. The fact that Perdido Key was in District 1 prior to 2000, and that, that's really just history. That it would give District 1 much of Escambia County's western border is, you know, that's just a geographic fact. And that Commissioner Underhill missed the first joint commissioner school board meeting 
uh, is not a good reason, though certainly regrettable. Uh, his opposition to moving Perdido Key out of District 2, I think, is well known uh, and was vetted at earlier commissioner discussions on the topic. On Perdido Key, I am asked why the transfer is being made, but I have no good answers. So I would like to ask Commissioners May, Bender, and Barry uh, why they support the change. Does it make sense to them? Is there something else going on the public should understand? Is moving Perdido Key from District 1 from District 2 to District 1, just not a big deal. I suppose much less than if, say, Pensacola Beach was being moved from District 4 to District 2. Uh, please let me know in the public, me and the public know, at some point now or before the final votes. If they're not good reasons for the shift, then it should not be made. If it is still made, it will certainly be viewed by me and probably others, looking back, as just an exercise in political power without too much merit. Uh, this would be unfortunate. So, thank you. Thank you. Paul Warren, followed by Shirley Til Tilney. Yes, good morning. My name is Paul Warren, and uh, I'm a long-term resident of Escambia County. However, I did move away in 1999 to South Florida, thinking that that would be a better place. But I found out quickly that was not a better place. So I moved back to Escambia County and bought a house out on Inner Rarity Point area on Rene Terrace. And I bought my home in 2006, and they had just recently built five new houses on Inner Rarity Point Road. And from 2006 into, until 2010, I kept watching the water get closer and closer and closer to my house where I couldn't even walk out to the mailbox. And I said, oh no, when I bought my house, they said I was in a no flood zone. So of course, nobody wants to buy insurance if you're in a no flood zone. But as the water got closer to my house, I went out and I bought the flood insurance in 2010. Well, in 2014, of course, we had the big rainstorm in 2014, 24 inches of rain in 24 hours, and the water just came down in a rarity point road and flooded my house. I got up at three o'clock in the morning with the dog barking, the cat going crazy, and walking in 18 inches of water in my house. No place to go. My wife is disabled. She has a lot of health problems. We tried to find a place to live. I can't tell you what it's like not being able to flush your toilets or take a shower for more than a week and a half. Finally, we found a place to stay for nine months while the house was being repaired. That was an expense that insurance didn't pay. Thank God I was smart enough to buy the flood insurance. So between 2014 and Recently, they've built three new houses on Rene Terrace. They've built four new houses on Bay Vista. And the water, it, it just keeps coming. I've done everything that I can do on my part. I built a $3,500 retaining wall in the back of my house. I put in uh, gutters. I have dug uh, French drains, everything. But the water still comes. Hurricane Sally. Again, my house flooded. It wasn't as bad, but it still flooded. And I don't have to tell you what that's like, because you know. Recently, Tropical Storm Nicholas, we had all that rain. My house did not flood, but I couldn't walk to my mailbox because the water was coming across the road. So what I'm asking for is I'm just asking for some help I'm a lot older now than seven years ago. My savings is going down. I had to buy a new car. I can't tell you the expenses that come out of the flood. Uh, but thank you very much. Interiority Point is a beautiful area, and we love the park. And thank you very much. And just anything that you can do for us before the next rainy season. Three years from now won't right. work. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Thank you. Shirley Tilney, followed by Chris Kerb. 
Hi, I'm Shirley Tilney. I'm a new resident to Scambia County. We bought our house September of last year. In fact, we closed 12 hours before Hurricane Sally hit. So we were told we were in a flood zone X. We weren't told there were any flooding issues. But two days later, when I finally made it, could make it to the house, I found it was an island. It was surrounded by water. I had to wade into water almost up to my hips to get to a flooded lockbox to even check out the house. Our neighbors weren't so, we were lucky this time, but our neighbors weren't. The new neighbors right next door to us had two feet of water. His pregnant wife was carrying clothes and anything she could salvage out of the house. The runoff from all the surrounding areas is becoming, when you look at the floodgates, the, all of the water from across the street, down the roads, all these houses around us are all going straight towards my house. Every time we have a rain, my yard, front yard floods, it goes around the house, then it floods between our two houses. We both have those sewage pump grinders, so when it's flooded, either the pumps keep running or if the power goes out, then all that sewage is backing up into our yards. That creates quite a health hazard. When I got a copy of our home plans, I discovered that our house was supposed to have been built above a higher level than inner rarity point. But for some reason, it was built two feet below the road. So <laughs> essentially, you've turned my yard into a flood zone. I'm wondering why the inspectors signed off on a house that was not built according to the plans the way it was permitted. There should have been a failed inspection for that. I feel the county failed to protect us from flooding and request that something be done to help fix this, not just us, but the five other neighbors that flooded this past September. We, none of us bought a house in a flood zone but that's what we've ended up with. The road becomes impassable. No one can get in and out to their houses. I just feel that as a Scamby County of Citizens, we have the right to expect the people in charge of protecting our safety and health do their jobs. And that's, to me, particularly, the flooding is one thing, but having sewage in my yard is another. That, to me, is a horrible, thing to have happen, you can't go out in your own yard. I'm thankful that we have a county where we can speak to, to you to let you know what our concerns are, and hopefully we can have something done about this very soon. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Chairman, very quickly. Yes, sir. Um, so uh, Flood Defender sent me this information, uh, and we've kicked it over to engineering and to Tim Day. Uh, there's some discussion about some possibility of a, uh, a mitigation, but uh, everybody should also recognize that you, you live on a very thin island like that, and sea level is coming up, um, just a little bit of expect, expectation management that, um, that, that realistically, uh, the 2014 flood, there is absolutely nothing that can be done uh, infrastructure-wise to prevent such a thing from happening on Interrarity again, or pretty to where I live. Um, with regard to your sewer, if, you're, if you have a grinder pump system, and when it floods, then you have sewage in your yard, your system is not operating properly that system should be sealed from stormwater uh, uh, intrusion. So um, strongly recommend that you have that looked at. It will destroy the system um, getting that salt water in there. Thanks. All right, Chris Kerb, followed by Amanda Brown. Good morning, commissioners. Um, I read a Facebook post this morning. It says the best way to, to be happy is to turn the negatives into positives. Be thankful for what you have and don't let anyone steal your joy. Went to the Santa Rosa County board meeting the other day and Julian Cooey started out with a scripture. You guys start out with a prayer before your meeting, so I thought, thought I'd start out with a scripture. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heat burning coals on his head. Do not overcome evil by evil, but overcome evil with good. You can determine what this means to you. I'll tell you what it means to me. 
You guys need to stop jabbing one another. Fueled by social media hate post. Lumen May spoke the other day. We had a conversation. He says, you guys argue over whether a bottle, an agenda item, was supposed to be green bottle. No, it was supposed to be a brown bottle. No, that bottle was supposed to have a gold ribbon around it. I took the analogy to mean the bottle the bottle is a project agenda item. Green is drainage and brown is sanitary sewer and the golden ribbon is grant funding. Point being is the bottle is the citizens that you represent. You guys need to unite and come together for the good of the people. Commissioner Robinson said once at a restore meeting, drainage does not respect district lines. It floods in all your districts. Y'all got to work together. Your citizens here need help. I passed you out the 12 tests, the common sense guide to great flood readiness. With more than 600 million national flood insurance program payouts and 100 million to properties with repetitive losses, Escambia County is one of the largest sources of flood damage in Florida, despite being the 20th by population. Flooding is a big problem in Escambia County, and given how expensive it is, you'd think it would be one of the first places the state and the county authorities would prioritize for f proper flood protection. You'd be forgiven for being wrong. Flood defenders investigated, and we're unable to grade you. There's just too much information missing. You gotta have a good plan and there's three steps under that. You gotta have smart infrastructure investment and there's three steps under that. Don't let development make flooding worse. Three steps under that. Right. And maintain and repair stormwater systems. Thank you, Chris. I sent you this. Uh, actually, I'll send this to you by email. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Amanda Brown followed by John Bass. Good morning, how are you guys morning. doing? Fine, thanks. Okay, um, I don't really know how to start this, so I'm just going to jump into it. Uh, just state uh, your name for the record. Okay, Amanda Brown. Um, I'm here to talk about the GTL services. Are you guys familiar with that? Um, it's what the jail uses to uh, have video visitations with their families and their attorneys. Right. Um, and I found that it is um, almost 90% ineffective. No matter where we are, what we're doing, it's freezing. You can't talk to them. They can't talk to us, or we can't see them. Um, you know, they we set an appointment to talk to them, and the jail is supposed to have them ready there, but we're waiting 25 minutes, and we only have an hour scheduled, and we're having to call the jail multiple times to get them in front of the camera. You know, we're paying for the attorney to set up these appointments, and for us to have to go out of our way and basically chase them down to get them on the camera, I, I don't think that's okay. And, um, you know, we're paying money for these things to be able to talk to them, and we're not able to talk to them. It's, you know... Um, Cellmates were overcharged in 2020, and I know there was a class settlement for 25 million, if I'm not wrong, that GTL had to pay in. And it's just, it's costing us way too much money for something that shouldn't be an issue. I mean, if, if this is what we, we need to do, or whatever we need to do to, to fix the problem, I, I'm willing to work on it. If you guys are willing to work on it, I know you guys got a million things on your mind, but this is very, very important, you know, for the cellmates to be able to talk to their attorneys comfortably, to be able to see their families, because it's very, very frustrating to, you know, go days without seeing your family, you know, as if you were going to see your children, you weren't able to see them. So sitting there in front of them, knowing that they're there, not being able to talk to them, or not being able to see them, it is very, very frustrating. Sure. And you know, my, my brother's in there, and he's got autism, and he's very, very scared, and I know that's the least of your concerns right now, but it's very, very important that he's able to talk to his attorney and get some things off his chest and start working on the case, but we can't do that if we're not able to talk to him. You know, and I just want to know who else I need so, to talk so we, to. We are uh, the company is is investing a couple hundred thousand dollars to upgrade the technology, okay. uh, in which we we think that will solve the problem. Okay. Um, and so, um, do we have an update on that? I'll have to get you an update in time. Okay. Um, okay. But yes, ma'am, we are aware of it. We are we are working to to, to upgrade the equipment to to handle it. And okay. um, um, and I'm sorry for your trouble. Oh, that, um, that's okay. Um, I um, okay. That's it. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Uh, John Bass.
Good morning. My name is John Bass. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, I, I do want to thank you all for your service and commitment to the city. I know you've gotten an earful on this tree, and you don't need to hear that much from me. Um, I was born and raised here in 67. I've seen a lot of changes, as I'm sure a lot of you have. Uh, the important thing is I left here in 1988 for a job that took me around the world. I'm very fortunate. So I've been able to compare the city to many, many places that I've lived. And I've been able to, of course, compare to when I left and I came back. Since COVID, I've had to move back here, and I'm very grateful I did. I couldn't figure out what safe place could be where I could live during this crap that went down, and I was not living in a place that is very kind to live in lockdown. And I chose Pensacola. Um, and I got involved with Margaret in this tree, and I've been seeing how heartbreaking it is. And I just, I know you all think about this tree, you have to. And what I'm asking is how we got this far and what we are teaching our children in this community to have no regard for a judge's order, uh, really from community feedback. And it's obvious, I know that uh, you all are probably tired of hearing about the whining of this tree, but it is really important. I know you know that. Um, this loss of this tree, every day I think about it. Uh, I am very fortunate to spend a lot of time at home. And during this time, I spent a lot of time outdoors. I have planted 63 trees in my yard, <laughs> you know, and every day I think about what y'all have done to this tree and where we're going and how we're just contributing to the floods, uh, the destruction of these roads. Uh, it, it's truly heartbreaking. I mean, I can't even speak. It's that emotional to me, what y'all have done. And I'm not really sure how we got to this point. And I do have two topics, and I have to get off that because I know I'm only allowed a certain amount of time. Uh, I moved to an area where I thought it was pretty quiet and safe. I'm off the tree, safe and quiet. And uh, I, fortunately, I suffer PTSD and a TBI. And this road that I live on is residential. It's 30 miles an hour. I've clocked it on my phone with a decimal uh, uh, recorder. I clocked in at 169. So somebody that suffers from TBI hearing this all day of these cars going up and down this road by the way, I have it on camera, 98 miles an hour. I have chickens that are crossing this road, and I am asking, I'm begging for somebody to please address this road problem because it's severely affecting my mental health. And not only that, the safety of everybody on this road. Yes, I mean, what, what road is it? Uh, Mitchell Lane, right off of Softly Field, right behind Penn Air. And we're talking, uh, these modified vehicles, five, every five to 10 minutes, one is going down my house. Sure. Clocking in at that speed and those, with that engine noise. Okay. So, so I'm asking somebody to please address this. All right. Um, and uh, if we can please uh, somehow tighten the ordinance on these, on the, preservation of these trees. I'm, I'm asking, I'm begging y'all to please do that. All right, thank and you, Mr. Bass. I thank you. Thank you. All right, board, that's the end of uh, public forum. Uh, so I think the plan is that we'll log into our stations once we rotate and we'll do hand votes for the, the first bit.
Tell me. Yes. Hey, Robert McCracken. Well, nice to meet you. I didn't catch your address. Uh, I'd like to get your phone number as well to come okay. take a look at what's going on. Okay, it's one four five zero two Inner Rarity Court Road. So, are you? Do you live over there by Mr. Warren? Yes. Good deal. All right. All right. So, I've, I've, I spoke to him yesterday. So, I will. I will try to gather everybody up and take a look at that. All right. This porch was flooded, about ready to come in for the house. And Sally, when I got there, is this close to going to my door? No, oh, man. And I'm just going, I thought for sure, for two days, that it had fit in the house. Right, right. Well, yeah, it's kind of bittersweet. It's it's up, but not in the house as good. Mr. Warren, how are you doing? Robert McCracken? Hey, Robert. Spoke I yesterday. yesterday. Right, so I wanted Listen. to talk to Mr. Good morning. This is the November 16th, 2021 Board of County Commissioners meeting, 9 a.m., a uh, couple minutes late with the uh, public forum, so it's currently 9.07. Please turn your cell phone to the vibrate, silence, or off setting. The Board of County Commissioners allows any person to speak regarding an item on the agenda. The speaker is limited to three minutes unless otherwise determined by the chair to allow sufficient time for all speakers. <laughs> The speaker shall refrain from abusive or profane remarks, disruptive outbursts, protests, or other conduct which interferes with the orderly conduct of the meeting. Upon completion of the public comment period, discussion is limited to board members and questions raised by the board. Uh, Commissioner Barry, I think you have the invocation this morning. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to uh, invite Mike Ramsey from Gonzales United Methodist Church to uh, give the invocation this morning. Perfect. And then will you lead us in the pledge? Yep. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we've gathered here today to get business of the county done, and many people are here with uh, various things, Lord, and to talk about, and there's always decisions to be made. We look to you to grant thy wisdom, Lord, to the, to the commission and to each person involved in leadership, because decisions are often hard to make. Just give them wisdom and guidance and be with these people who are here today as they present their case before the commission that peace would abide here in this place. Continue to bless this wonderful community. This county is such a special place. And we look to you for your abiding grace to help, help all of us grow together peacefully, supporting one another without division, but with great unity, so that we may see a bright future, not only for ourselves, but for our children. So Lord, it's, it's a heavy burden that these folks carry. And you say in your word to cast our burden upon you, cast our care upon you, for you care for us. Your yoke is easy and your burden is light. So that's my prayer today for these that are here for this very important meeting that the burden would be light and that you would help them each step of the way. And we just pray these things in the mighty name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag. And Mike, thank you for being here.
appreciate you. I uh, appreciate you. And by the time uh, Jack finishes VPK, we will have booked nine years at Gonzales Methodist with uh, little ones, uh, uh, in addition to mom teaching Sunday school for 43 years. So um, that's a, it's a very important to me that Mike be here. So I appreciate him doing so. And they have a great daycare. Very, 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 very good job. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Uh, are there any items to be added to the agenda? No, sir. No. Uh, I'll have two, Mr. Chairman. None. One, it's been distributed. Okay. Uh, and then I have one uh, for um, out of county travel for conferences and things. We haven't done that yet, so. I don't have any. Okay. Take a, we'll do a hand vote on, uh, take a motion and a hand vote on the agenda. Move the agenda as amended. Second. Please vote. Motion passes 5 0. Commissioner's form. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, just want to send uh, thoughts and prayers out to uh, uh, Attorney Greg Smith, who was a dear friend of mine. Was uh, His services were last week. He passed away two weeks ago. Um, he was uh, uh, somebody that uh, found himself as an adversary of the county in a couple of, uh, in a couple of court settings, but um, uh, was a you know, very dear friend through the Masonic Lodge and Scottish Rite and through the Shrine. Um, and he was laid to rest uh, middle of last week. And, it was, uh, you know, with a heavy heart, a very, very young man, um, uh, much too soon. But thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Commissioner May. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Stephen Gregg, I remember in our early days, appeared before the commission on, on, on multiple times. He was a, certainly a fiery lawyer, so um, I, 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 I always respected Gregg. But uh, it's with sad hearts that we recognize, I, I think, Many of you um, were here at this um, budget cycle when the Sisters of Hope came for funding, and I think we were able to help them out. What a great story of two sisters who were uh, convicted for armed robbery uh, and that were wrongfully convicted but went on to become advocates for justice. And they have the Sisters of Hope, but unfortunately, Jamie Scott uh, lost her life to COVID. Uh, and so we, our prayers are, are with the Scott family and, and with all the Sisters of Hope. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you know, before we start, I'll just let you know, probably about 10 to 10, uh, I'll be exiting uh, as we're doing interviews for the Children's Trust uh, upstairs. And um, I'm in and out just listening to the interview. So if there's something that needs all five votes, I would ask that we just get to it by 10 to 10. Yes, sir. Okay. Nothing for the good of the whole. Nothing for me. Okay. Um, I don't have anything for the good of the whole. All right. Uh, rotation of uh, chairman and vice chairman. Mr. Chairman, before we uh, move our seats around, if without objection, I would like to take the opportunity to thank you for your leadership over the last year, um, leading us through some difficult times as we navigated recovery from Hurricane Sally, um, showing a great deal of leadership working with engineering and traffic out of the beach. Um, getting a lot of things accomplished out there, extra parking, better traffic flow around Casino Beach, um, you know, leadership as we've, as we've dealt with staffing challenges and just being present and, and just having like perfect attendance at all meetings, um, except for the one that you couldn't be at. Um, so I just want to thank you for the last year and it's my honor to present this plaque to you as an expression of our appreciation from myself, your counterparts on the board, and all the members of the county staff. Congratulations and a good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, board, it, it's uh, truly, uh, I appreciate the op this opportunity this past year. Uh, to, to be here and, and to uh, um, be, be the chair. Um, and I am uh, happy to, to turn over the gavel to Commissioner Bragosh uh, as he uh, enters his second reign as, as chairman. Reign? Wait, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, but no. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, Jeff, I, I look forward to continuing working with you uh, as, as you become chair uh, and look forward to continue to represent citizens of District 4 and, and uh, those of Escambia County. So uh, I'll look, again, I know, I know we'll have uh, great leadership under you over the next year 
and uh, thank you so much for everything you did. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Well, Jeff, the challenge is for you to get us out of means less than an hour. Well, um, I'm up to it. Let's rock and roll. Let's do it. All right, at this point, we're going to move our chairs around, so just give us a couple minutes, and we'll get this thing started in about five minutes. Thanks. We'll be starting in just a moment. We've got a little technical difficulty here.
Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and continue our meeting now. Apologize for the uh, brief delay. We did have some uh, technical challenges. So moving forward, the next uh, item on our agenda will be the, the proclamations. Uh, the chair would entertain a motion. Move the proclamation. Second. We have a motion and a second on the proclamations. Please vote. Are we all in? And we're waiting. Everyone vote. Five, okay, uh, that's what I assumed. It passed 5 0. Okay. Um, at this particular time, um, uh, who would like to uh, read the proclamation? Commissioner Barry, would you like to read the proclamation? Mr. Chairman, I, I want to thank Cindy for, for coming down. Um, Eric Gilmore has it. Okay. Eric and, uh, Eric and Gary were, were friends, for, uh, friends for many years in the North End firefighting community. And uh, if she might, you know, please make her way down as well. Thank you, Eric. Yeah. Thank you. It's an honor to get to do this. I didn't know Gary for a long time, known the family for a long time, fought a lot of fire with him. So thank you for letting me, allowing me to do this yes, and give the proclamation. Whereas Gary Diamond was a Molina resident who served as a volunteer firefighter in the community for such, much of his life, Gary joined the Inslee Volunteer Fire Department in 1982. Shortly, shortly before transferring to the Molina Volunteer Fire Department, it was at the Molina Fire Department that Gary would work his way through the ranks as a volunteer firefighter, all the way up to assistant chief title which he received in 1987. Continuing his service, Gary went on to serve as the fire chief from November 1992 to September 1993. And whereas Gary continued to pursue his calling in the fire service, relocating to Navarre Beach in 2006, where he was both an EMT and a captain before he turned in his uniform to go back home to Molina. In, <clears throat> even in retirement, Gary was always a call away from assisting local departments by volunteering as a fleet transport, moving uh, fire cars and trucks around the county as needed. And whereas on December 26, 2020, Gary lost his life. While he's not physically here anymore, his legacy and his community he touched are, still are. Many of Gary's friends recall all the good work that Gary performed. Many would quote, he selflessly protected others at the expense of his own life through his entire career. And whereas it was because of Gary's work ethic and demeanor that he would go on to posthumously be honored as Florida's Career Firefighter of the Year for 2021, an award that is signed by the governor and presented by the Florida uh, Chief Financial Officer and the State Fire Marshal, Jimmy Petronas. Gary's wife, Cindy Diamond, received the award on behalf of Gary. Now forward, let it be, be proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners of Escambia County, Florida, recommends and honors Gary, Gary Diamond's life and his time of service to the people of Escambia County. A Board of County Commissioners, Jeff Bergoss, Chairman District 1, Douglas Underhill, Vice Chairman District 2, Lumen May District 3, Robert Bender District 4, and Stephen Berry District 5. Thank you, Ms. Cindy. Moving forward, our next item on the agenda is written communication. Uh, the chair would, I do have one speaker. Would, the, would it be the uh, pleasure of the board to hear from our speaker? Okay, then we'll go ahead and we will call up Mrs. Patricia Roll. Please state your name at the microphone and you'll be uh, recognized. Okay, I apologize because I'm almost deaf and even with my hearing aids, I might not hear what you yes, said. Yes, ma'am. Just identify yourself. Your uh, name? Patricia Rowell. Yes, ma'am. Welcome. Okay, so I'm here because I bought a, a tax deed property and tax sale and my ignorance, I was not aware that it had liens attached to it. I bought it so my son could hopefully build a house on it for his cross from Tate School where his children were going to school financial reasons not able to do that um, so I put it up for sale found out that it still had the lien attached to it I had paid eight thousand dollars over the taxes amount owed so I thought it covered that lien found out it sorry had a, another lien attached to it to the property next door that was by the same deceased owner um, so 
I applied for the tax, I mean the lien relief. Um, the application that was put in actually put the original amount, which was over $8,000, it's only $4,400 that's still owed on it. My, my extra money went to both properties. The people next door sold their property last year, which was, theirs was also a tax deed sale um, purchase, but they sold it last year for $14,000 and the new owners got a warranty deed somehow, but none of that $14,000 went to, towards either lien. I don't know how that happened, because when I tried to sell mine, red flags went up all over the place. Yes, ma'am. But, um, so, I live on Social Security. After my insurance payments and all, I, I bring home $1,200 a month that I have to live on. And so, I got the letter that was signed by Mr. Marino that said um, I could pay 7,350, which of course he got the wrong amount that's not owed on my property. Um, and then he said that he couldn't release the lien on the other property from my property. So I had to appeal to the board here. So that's what I'm asking if I can get these liens released from my property, try to recoup my $17,000 that I paid for my property and uh, even it's going to cost me money to switch it out of a tax deed to uh, try to get a warranty deed even if I get this release. I've been told it could cost like $3,000. So I've got real estate, those fees and all that just to try to get my money back out of it. So I'm hoping that you guys have mercy <laughs> on me, oh, this retired widow, and uh, try to release me from these liens that was from years and years ago. Thank you, Mrs. Rao, for being here. Um, I'm gonna, I see uh, several lights on, so I'm gonna recognize uh, my counterpart from your district, District 5. Doug, did you wanna speak to this as well? Okay, so Commissioner uh, Barry, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you for being here, Ms. Rao. Um, it's taken me a lot longer to figure to figure out what happened with this than, than it normally would. I felt kind of slow in my uh, getting up to speed yesterday and, and early this morning on the issue. Um, it's rather rather complicated the way that uh, the way that it worked out. So uh, Ms. Rowell did pay considerably over. Uh, she paid a considerable overage, but her overage was split between two liens that were associated with the previous owner, not necessarily associated with the property. Um, she did pay $8,969.31 overage, which was in pro rata applied uh, to the two liens that were um, associated with the previous owner. There were hard costs on the property that Ms. Rowell acquired of $7,350. So um, I would move that the board um, release the liens associated with this property in lieu of the fact that she has paid in excess of, uh, of all the hard costs. Um, um, and, but I, you know, that's my motion. I'd be happy to answer questions as well as I can. I'm gonna have to ask Allison. So. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, Commissioner Bender, did you wanna speak on the item as no, well? No, just, I was gonna say, Steve and I agree that, that the overages, I think more than cover the hard costs. Um, and, uh, and, and I agree with, with everything. And the, the fact that the neighbor was able to, you know, to execute a transaction, you, you never know. There may not be title insurance by the, by the buyer on the, on the transaction next, you know, the adjacent property. So we don't know exactly what happened there. But with regards to this, I think that we can successfully uh, relieve, relieve these liens in lieu of the fact that all of the county's hard costs plus a little bit more has been paid. We have a motion and a second. I see no further lights. Uh, please vote. All right, it passes 5-0. Congratulations, we've, uh, we've- So both liens will be released? Um, the one from next, the property next door also? The, against your property. Only so only against your property. So I would see this is gonna be a partial release of all liens related to 1758 Tate Road. The property that uh, was sold by separate tax deed oh, sale sorry. at the neighboring property may still have liens attached to it. Okay, but I don't have any. Well, Thank yeah, you correct. so much. I appreciate it. 
Thank you for being here. Happy to happy to help. All right, item number two, partial lien relief request uh, payoff concerning a ship lien at 266 North Carries Lane. Commissioner Underhill, that's in your district. You're recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, looking at this, uh, you know, I think all the information is in the backup, uh, unless, uh, Madam Attorney, do you have any other information that's not already in the backup that you wanted to add? I would suspect nope. not since. You know. um, so this individual uh, put her children on her, um, on her lien uh, on the, the title to her property uh, through a quick claim. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, you know, added ownership, added another, another uh, ownership, um, which I guess in some ways of looking at the lien terms, it would be that could possibly be a, a violation. Uh, I do not think that it is. Uh, the plain language of the lien terms is that if the property is sold, ownership transferred to another party or parties, or the property is converted to rental occupancy during the five-year period, then she'd, be, she'd pay it back. Um, clearly, the property was not sold. Uh, clearly, the property was not returned to or converted to a rental occupancy. Um, you know, so the question is, by adding her family on there, does that change ownership, ownership transfer? Uh, I don't think it does because uh, she has maintained ownership of the property the whole time and still is on the title. So uh, what she's asking for is to, um, to deter for this board uh, to consider her ship loan to be in compliance. Um, and this would allow her to, uh, to move forward with a refinancing um, with a payoff amount of $6,220. Um, so my motion is that we uh, uh, grant the request uh, as presented um, with this board determining that her uh, ship loan is in compliance and that the payoff amount of $6,220 uh, is the correct amount for her uh, refinance effort, effort. Okay, so Commissioner Underhill has a motion on the floor. Uh, is there a second to his motion? Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Uh, Commissioner Bender, did you have a light on for a minute? Okay. Any further discussions? Uh, I think it sounds pretty reasonable to me. Uh, seeing none, please vote. All right, that passes 4-0 with Commissioner May off the dais. All right, moving forward now. Did the clerk's office receive the proofs of publication of the public hearings on the agenda and the board's weekly meeting schedule? Mr. Chairman, the clerk's office has received all proofs. Move that we waive the reading. We have motion. Second. A motion and second to waive the reading. Please vote. Motion to waive the reading passes 4-0 with Commissioner May off the dais. Okay, moving forward next, uh, we will have a public hearing concerning the proposed grant application for Federal Transit Administration uh, 5339 funding for capital. Uh, Tanya Ellis, did you have anything to present? Oh, is Tanya here? Oh, Rodriguez Kimbrough, you're recognized. We don't have any speakers, by the way, gentlemen. Anything you'd like to add for the board's consideration? Uh, yes, I would like the board to just uh, take a chance to look over the, the documents because as we know, uh, ECAT was built in 1979, 1982, began to do uh, our services there uh, with minimal repairs and modifications. 1992 was a repair and modification, 2000 was a repair and modification. And uh, just hearing yesterday that, you know, after we've been through the floods, we've been through the hurricanes, uh, there hasn't been any modifications and having the ability for us to apply for this competitive grant, it'll allow us to uh, make some of those renovations that's actually needed to bring our transit service uh, actually to a modern state. So as we uh, attempt to drive ECAT towards excellence, we hope that you know we can get the approval for this. Fantastic, all right, there's no speakers. The chair would entertain a motion on items one and two. So moved. We have a motion, do we have a second? second? Motion and second on items one and two. Any further discussion? Commissioner Bender, your light's on? Nope, seeing none, please vote for items one and two. Thank you, Mr. Kimbrough. Sorry, Jeff, I'm used to leaving my light on, so. Yeah, <laughs> leave the light on. Uh, and that passes 4-0 with Commissioner May off the dais. Okay, moving forward now, uh, we are going into the Clerk and Comptroller's Report. Madam Clerk, you're recognized. Sure, thank you. There were two items on the Comptroller's agenda. The first one has to do with the TDT returns. You'll see that it's still pacing above in a comparative way, fourth to fifth and the other is a minor, just reports and minutes that we've prepared. Thank you. Thank you. Move the clerk's report. Second. We have a motion and second to move the clerk's report. Please vote. Sir, I do want to remind you that 
while I have the microphone yes, that we will be working with your staff. The auditors will walk in November 29th. This is the financial audit. This is the JLAC audit? Yeah, no, this the is the financial, financial audit. audit. The JLAC audit is an operational audit, which will work differently when we'll probably start with your administration, but we'll keep you posted, but we'll be working with your department. Thank you. Appreciate it, Madam Clerk. Okay, very good. Moving forward, growth management report. Horace Jones, you're recognized. Welcome. Good morning, Chairman. Um, board members. You got to speak up. You got to move yes, forward. Yes, sir. Good morning, Chairman, Commissioners, and Board members. We have the 915. This is that the Board kind of Commission review and adopt an ordinance repealing and replacing ordinance number 2016-43 and ordinance number 2017-30. This is the, uh, the second of two public hearings. I don't see that we have any speakers on this topic. Uh, any discussion among the board members? Commissioner Underhill, you recognize this is important in your district. It is indeed important to all of us. I'm very, sure. very uh, important. <laughs> move the 915 in the affirmative as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. <laughs> Item passes 4 0 with Commissioner May back on the dais. <laughs> Welcome back. All right. Horse? The next item is to review and approve and hold harmless agreement with Kathy Collins. If any questions, Mr. Jewel Homer is here to answer. Do we have any questions on this topic? We have no speakers. The chair would entertain a motion. Move item two, one in the affirmative. We have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing no lights, please vote. GMR 2-1 vote uh, passes unanimously. Moving on to GMR 2-2, Commissioner uh, Horace, you recognize? The next item is uh, concerning a final plat to review a preserve at Duran, the approval of the final plat. Mr. Chairman, Basically. is all, all well with it? Yes, sir, uh, Horace, and uh, yes, did sir. we get those, are those ponds, we did, everything? We, we, we did get the taxes paid. Taxes are paid, ponds are good. All right. Yes, sir. All right, uh, Mr. Chairman, I move the item uh, A and B. Okay, we have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second uh, for A and B. Please vote. All right, that passes unanimously. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, we are moving on now to the, the, and consent. the consent agenda for December the second. Move the consent agenda. Second. Motion and second on the consent agenda. Please vote. All right, consent agenda passes unanimously. Thank you, Horace. All right, uh, now we're gonna move on to the county administrator's report. Uh, Administrator Marino, you recognize. Mr. Chairman, there are six items on the technical public service consent agenda and there are no changes. Okay. Gentlemen, let me just check and see if we have any speakers. We still, no speakers. Okay, so we have no speakers. Uh, the chair would entertain a motion on the- Move the consent agenda. Second. Motion is second to move the entire agenda. Further discussion, please vote. There we go. All right, technical public service consent agenda passes unanimously. We're moving now on to budget finance. Mr. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mr. Chairman, there are 20 items on the budget finance consent agenda. Please make the following change. Drop car 2-3, the recommendation for the appropriation of uh, capital improvement program fund, Southwest Greenway land acquisition west of Fairfield Drive. And hold car 2 4 for speakers, please. Okay. Okay. Um, Do we have any other um, yeah. items? Is this, was my add on added on to this? You said it was in the system, so I just, he said there were 20 items, so I just want to make sure that it's not. Commissioner Binder, your, add, your item is added as an add on at the end of the agenda. Okay, perfect. Okay. That's your travel? Yes. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, sir, please, you recognize. I just want to thank Robert Turpin for his work. Uh, item 2-2 uh, is the uh, removal of the vessel that's that's next to the Grand Marlin right there on Pensacola Beach as we drive in. Um, and uh, it's been a, a long process that we tried to take care of before, uh, I guess, Ida came uh, came this way. Um, but uh, uh, so glad to get this working and get that out of here. All right, very good. So, Mr. Got Chairman, to, yes. Can we also hold 16 for discussion? Hold 16 for discussion. Yes, sir. Yep. OK. 
Okay, so we've got number three dropped. We're holding four. We're holding 16. Any other requests? Move, move the balance if there's no other comments. Okay. Uh, we have a motion to move the balance. Second. Motion and a second to move the balance. Anything else that we want to pull? All right. Please vote. We, we're waiting for one more. There's just a delay. It should be popping up. Oh, here it comes. Okay. All right. The balance of the budget finance consent agenda passes unanimously. Okay. We've dropped number three, so we're on. We're up to item number four. We have speakers. Gentlemen, would you like to hear the speakers before we go into the item? Yes. Okay. We're going to go ahead and hear from the speakers. Let me get my list. Oh, we dropped to number three. Yeah, no, no, this is number four. We're on four. We're on four. Okay, first speaker, uh, we have Melissa Pino. Thank you, Chairman Bragash. Uh, 413 Southeast Boblets, we miss public forum, so we'll hold off till next meeting to try to get some of our seating um, minutes back from the new chair. Um, Beach Haven drainage. <laughs> Everything has been said, right? So just to underline a few aspects of this, Commissioner May, watch the tape a couple of times from last time. I hear you and I hear you about this is bad stewardship. It is, and there's no getting around it, but so much of it is water under the bridge. And the huge gap isn't just because of what happened on the back end, it's also because of what happened on the front end. And like I said in a previous speaking on this item, we will never know what the true market price was when this thing first got put out to bid because it was in effect gifted to a large vendor who basically got to set the price on the low bid on it um, with, and I'll keep underlining the ridiculous thing of having surplus built right into that item then all of the shenanigans that happened afterwards, including backup being added to the minutes, which that was very strange, Madam Clerk. There was a lot of verbiage that got added to the packet backup after that item. I am begging, so many people in that area are begging the commission to find a way to fund this project because in effect, the bad stewardship is now gonna be a double bad because of the bad stewardship that happened is gonna result in a crucial project not getting funded because of that. I, I know the eight million isn't there. I mean, I, I'm surprised that anybody thought it was gonna be there, that a check for eight million would sit under the previous administration and not get spent. I, I don't know what universe that possibly could have happened. I'd like to know how fast the money was spent after the eight mil was actually available. Please find a way to fund this project. We all know what the game is gonna be for the next year. Agenda item after agenda item, District 2 is gonna pop up with infrastructure and drainage emergencies that should have been handled already during the previous seven years. And then it's gonna be a shaming exercise on you commissioners. Oh, what, you know, you won't fund my projects? You big meanies. Everything went to the, gol the golf jet ski pass path. Everything went to the sand allocation for the condo owners. And now this year, we're going to see an endless stream of supplemental budget items, right? LOST to District 4, LOST to District 4. They're all important projects, but the commission is going to have to take hold of where the monies are and what projects are there. I'm glad to see that 16 is being held because I've got questions about that. Glad three was dropped, but please show some mercy to these residents, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Pino. Uh, next speaker is Kevin Wade. Good 
Good morning, Myrtle Grove, Beach Haven. Radio Key is taking some limelight right now, isn't it? Kevin Wade, 413 Southeast Boblets. Speaking of limelight, um, I, I end up, ended up joining in the horror that the FDOT people showed at the last meeting about the widening of Gulf Beach Highway. They didn't know that they got dumped with a little bit of a sewage project um, as the sewer 4A, 4B, Navy Point sewer project hop jumped around, went to the north side. And right now, all those residents out there, uh, how, how, how amazing is it driving on Gulf Beach Highway right now? Just had a light taken down a little while ago. There's safety, you know. Oh. FDOT enlightened all of us that because of the current commissioner in the area, they were shell-shocked. And many of the projects involved in the widening of Gulf Beach Highway that would have been rolled right up into the sewer project lie that you were being fed while the feeder system went to the north were portions of the project slated now as beyond 2040. This is a project I heard about 28 years ago when I moved here in the first week that I moved here with all of the designs at that time of how the Navy Boulevard, Gulf Beach Highway, Barrancas intersection was going to be changed. Everything all the way out, all the way to the beach, all the way to the north would have been this wonderful project that many people had been working decades for. But right now, we're still under the gun after having lost 150 million that was sitting in the bank for projects for safety on the roads of District 2. What do we got? We got a multi-use path. Um, how's that working out for the sewer in Myrtle Grove? How's that working out for the sewer in Beach Haven? You know, you got a few lights, but from everything I've heard, that was staff being told, hey, there's money. Go ahead and drop it into lights somewhere. And they did. Oh, uh, yeah. We need to see progress in this area, and we need to see a commissioner that can work with FDOT and all the way out in Perdido Key. You know, it's time. Thank you, Mr. Wade. Uh, board, that's the end of the speakers. Is there a discussion on this topic? This is a pretty important topic. Um, uh, I'm not seeing any lights. Commissioner Underhill, you're recognized. Well, as I would uh, think the last time we closed out this discussion, um, the uh, obviously all of my uh, uh, local option sales tax discretionary uh, for the remainder of my tenure is already spoken for and already promised out. Uh, won't be backing off of that promise. Um, we did uh, end that discussion with a discussion of a short discussion about the eight million um, that was to be proceeds from the uh, sale of the NFCU. Uh, for District 2, that, prop, that money had not been, yet been spoken for. Um, it was, I believe, I, I, as I recall, the will of this board that that would be uh, split up uh, among the commissioners uh, it, uh, equally for discretionary spend um, on infrastructure. I am perfectly happy to spend the portion of District 2's money uh, from the, that sale on, the, uh, on keeping this project alive. I can think of no other um, uh, higher priority in uh, uh, in terms of infrastructure in District 2 uh, for the next, you know, for the next year. Now, obviously, the next commissioner will have his priorities, but uh, for me, for our, my purposes right now, 
um, that seems like a reasonable place to start. Uh, obviously, that doesn't cover the entire delta, but uh, you know that, that was what I said at the end of last meeting, and obviously, uh, my word still stands on that. Okay, we got some lights on now. Mr. Chairman, I just... Yes, uh, Commissioner May. I, I want to I clear that you know, when we talk about that $8 million of discretionary, it, it wasn't restricted to infrastructure. If there's something no, it's, that... it's unrestricted funds. Right, yeah. I'm sorry, you're correct. That, I, uh, take back what I said. Was not meant for just. Okay, I just wanted to be clear. I mean, everybody, I'm, if a community center is important to you, whatever is important in your district. And and for the record, uh, Commissioner Barry, you'll be recognized. But for the record, I've requested because that's I've been interested. I, I had a memory that that money was spent. Others had different memories. Um, here's what I've ascertained: uh, the 8.4 million we got, uh, and it kind of came um, really out of nowhere. But we were happy to get it. It was bo uh, oil spill money, 8.4 million from the Levin firm. And immediately right away, 5 million, 5.4 million of that was put into the disaster recovery fund and 3 million was deposited in general fund. Now, the very next day we got our disaster declaration, but never, nevertheless, that money was spent as I thought it was. The money was spent. Now, the disaster recovery fund, according to yesterday, hot off the press, is about $50 million uh, in the hole. Now, eventually, eventually, we will get reimbursed from FEMA. We'll have some money coming back. But right now, we don't have 5 million in that fund to pull it from. That's that's where we're at, and so um, uh, you know we I, are going to get it correct. I mean, well, I, I mean, if I, 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 I'm I not, gonna, so. we're going to get those reimbursed from FEMA. It's going to come from somewhere so. else. I mean, but, but it's not like eight million sitting okay. in the bank. Yeah. we would have to pull it. We'd have to do some gymnastics and some gyrations with the money and the funds. But it has nothing to do with that. What I'm saying, Jeff. I mean, there that. <laughs> It'll come out of another reserve before they take that eight million dollars. No, I, and, and, and I want it back. Like, we yeah, need it, we yeah, need it in our yeah. districts, and I and we'll yeah, get it back. Not, but that's not going to work. But but what? I'm, but the point I'm making before I turn it over to Commissioner Barry, who's recognized next, is it's not like it's sitting there. We just transfer over. Some okay. things got to get moved around. So Commissioner Barry, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm the 8.4 will that that that'll be fine. Um, you know, the we, we did have to front money into disaster recovery fund, and um, you know, in that 8.4 will not. <clears throat> will not end up back in, you know, the general LOST pot. That'll end up back in genuinely general fund unrestricted dollars. Um, and, it, and it, yeah, and it, and it won't be, it won't be too long. Uh, we do have, uh, we do have some portion of funds that have come in to cover the five, 5.4. It may not be 5.4 yet. I want to say we've maybe got 3.6 in hand or 3.2 pretty recently, but nonetheless, the, a lot of that is going to come, you know, pretty quickly. I, I, I'm, comfortable that uh, after, you know, some conversations with Wes as well as, uh, you know, with Liz that, uh, you know, she's on, she's on top of things and, and that those things are going to happen. Um, that's, you know, for the purposes of this, of this item is, is, is kind of moot to me. I, I uh, as commissioner mentioned that he's of the same opinion he was when we talked about last time, I have the same opinion as well. There is still 4.195 that's unencumbered out of his discretionary funds. Those would be the only ones that I would support uh, bridging this delta. Um, you know, the rest of what he's talking about, his promises to his constituents and those things, all that has to come to the board anyway. He mentioned 1.5. That sounded like two projects that are relatively close to Commissioner May's uh, area. If uh, those end up being something that Commissioner May, you know, as well thinks is a good idea, then, you know, then maybe that's when we talk about what one fifth of 8.4 is, which is a little more than 1.6 or 1.7. Maybe that's when we bring that into the discussion. But for the purposes of today, there is that much unencumbered and unspent in that discretionary fund for his district. And that's the only, that's the only way that I'm gonna support funding the project today. Thank you, Commissioner Barry. Commissioner Bender, you're recognized. Yes, sir, thank you. I was just gonna talk about the, the BP money real quick. And yes, we did move it. You know, we said we would use it in the event we didn't get the declaration. We got the declaration, so even though it's not sitting there, I fully expected that we will be made, be made whole. Uh, and that's what I meant when I said it hadn't been spent in terms of, uh, of that. It was a loan, it'll be repaid. So, um, but uh, no, I, I agree with my counterpart that, um, you know, we, we haven't even started to have a discussion on, on ARPA and the restore funds um, that we have. I think we have a lot of other needs that are, are coming up that uh, honestly, we're being gifted with the, the 28 million. That that's the the lost funding um, that I think um, uh, is is a much more needed areas uh, in our county, and uh, and so um, I, I look for for the money to come from somewhere else. Thank you. 
All right. Um, okay. So hearing from Commissioner Bender and from Commissioner Barry, you know, I'll weigh in once again. Um, Commissioner Underhill, you know, we've gone round and round on this. Uh, I think it's a worthwhile project, as you do. Um, I think I see a path forward for your Jackson complete streets and your sewer to septic project in Brownsville. If, and you're hearing uh, Commissioner Barry allude to that, we move this project forward, you'll have about 1.6 million that I think you'll find support for those additional projects. Um, and you could do all three. But uh, I'm hearing at least two votes um, that are not gonna move forward without a, a further commitment of your discretionary money. So, you know, here's where we are. Uh, and the chair would entertain a motion. Yeah, well, um, I, thank you. Um, certainly won't be making a motion uh, that's going to go back on any of the word that I've given um, and uh, have been you know, prayerful and hopeful that this board would not uh, take politics to the point of, view of uh, actually uh, breaking for the first time, I think, unprecedentedly, um, the, uh, uh, the use of discretionary funds as a discretion of the uh, elected official uh, that represents the people from that district. Um, you know, that's <laughs> This was an $11.8 million project. This could have been already more or less done um, had it not been for the histrionics and, and politics that took place in this room. Um, you know, if, uh, if it is now more expensive because of those things, if it is now killed because of those things, make no bones about it, Mr. Chairman. It dies because of politics, not because uh, it was a bad project, uh, not because it was underfunded or because the staff did something wrong. Um, you know, 11.8 sure looks like a very good deal now. Um, so uh, I'm, you know, it would be inappropriate for, uh, and certainly I would never support uh, any uh, attempt to uh, tell another commissioner from another district uh, what the priorities are for discretionary spend there. Um, as you know, I've been opposed to discretionary spend uh, since the time I joined this board, but that is the practice of this board and uh, the board should follow its practices. Uh, and, you know, don't uh, you know, the, the 50,000 that we give, you know, those things come up here and uh, have never opposed one of them, even though, that, you know, as I've said, I think those discretionary spends are bad. So uh, clearly the board has the raw power to do this if they uh, to go a different route and, uh, and make that statement if that's what they want to do. Um, I think that will be very poorly uh, received by the citizens of Escambia County. Um, and I would hope that we have the discipline not to do that. Commissioner Bender, you're recognized. Thank you. Doug, I, you know, I said the other day that I, I didn't think that we should uh, spend your discretionary funds, and I still stand by that. Um, it becomes a decision on, on your part, much like I did with the uh, beach access road to add $500,000 to that when it came in overage with uh, Hurricane Sally and having to, to drive around and, and everything like that. Uh, it was important enough to, to complete it, so I, I put forward discretionary dollars. Um, and so uh, I, th it's, I don't, maybe we're hearing different things, but I, I'm hearing the board say, if it's important to you, then you need to put the discretionary dollars forward. It rests on you if it, if it fails. If it, doesn't, if it doesn't pass, it's because you're not willing to put forward some money towards the project. It's not saying that, I, I mean, I'm not gonna vote to, to spend your discretionary money without, without you using it, you know, without you making that motion. So it's really up to you if this moves forward today. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Uh, the project already has nearly a half million dollars of my discretionary uh, in it. Uh, it was the first money that went into the project, um, and which has allowed it to move as far forward as it has. That's a strong argument, a strong discussion for how important this project was to me and has been to me for many years. Um, I don't feel compelled to have to give an additional uh, uh, argument for that uh, in order to make up for what uh, was done by this board uh, in turning down the earlier um, uh, proposal. And, uh, and causing the cost overruns that we now see. Commissioner Barry, you recognize? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, I still have issues with the way that the, the, way the procurement was done, which doesn't necessarily have anything to do with this today. Um, Mr. Chairman, it doesn't really sound like there's support for, uh, for what I was alluding to. Um, does it necessarily sound like there's much support for what Commissioner Underhill has alluded to? So there you go. I appreciate that. Well, we have discussed it. I would like to ask um, chips. I mean, it's it sounds like a broken record. Can we get two more weeks? I mean, we you know we're, we keep chipping away at this thing. 
Mr. Don't. Chairman, in the interest of, I mean, uh, I'm, I am not going to change my opinion about that. So well, you never if, know. If there is a, well, actually, I do. <laughs> I'm pretty secure, secure in that. So, I mean, I wouldn't continue to badger staff to uh, to do something that, I mean, if there's if if there's an attempt to get a, a different route, um, I will not budge on the promises that I've made. I will not change my position on this issue. Okay. Well, be that as it may, the question remains: Could we get two more weeks on this? I don't want to give up on. I said it before. It's a good project. It's ridiculous that we can't get it over the line. It's ridiculous. Commissioner Underhill has money to spend. He's got less than a year. And that, you know, but if I pass the gavel and make the motion, I'm hearing from my counterpart that I won't, I mean, it'll die at a 2-2. So there, we're at a genuine stalemate here up on this board. Um, so can we get two more weeks? Or, or is this thing done as of today? Commissioner, uh, I, I do believe the, the grantors will give us a couple of more weeks, um, but I, I would also like to, to remind you that uh, the, the bids, for, the two bids for mm -hmm. this project, phase two, uh, were opened, uh, I believe it was July 26. Yep. So the, it, I know they're getting, they're getting pretty stale on the shelf. Fourth of this Excuse month. me? The prices are good to the 24th of this month. So to 24th of, of this month, which is um, eight days, right. uh, those bids are going to expire. So it's, it's pretty much do it, do it or do or die right now. Commissioner, it, you know, if we were to, if those bids expire and, and we were to go back out through the solicitation process again, that could very well be another four or six month process. And, and that six million dollars of grant funding is going to go away, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, Commissioner Bennett. Uh, Chip Solon. I, I mean, I understand the importance of of not giving back grant fund dollars. I mean, that I think it's. Um, I mean, we've we've had that happen with other grants with public safety before. Um, it, it's it it doesn't help our chances in the future. No, it hurts us. Um, and, and I'd hate to see that happen. Um, but let, can we talk a little bit about what, what went into the four million? I mean, this, this overage that we're seeing. I mean, there was a, I mean, there were some changes made and, and um, two mobilizations. We added a, there was a $600,000 change order at our request to, right? Is that about it? 1.2 and then the cost of the piping. Because yeah. remember, Joy Jones sent out a thorough accounting. It's for real. And, and, and that's what I'm saying is, is that the, it's, um, it, it's, it's all, uh, you, you can attribute it to something, it, you know, it's, it's not just uh, profit or something like that. I mean, there, there were changes that were made mm -hmm. on our end that, that caused the increase. To, so to say that it was just because we didn't take the first deal. Oh, absolutely. Is, yeah, that's, that's, not, not, that's not true. Right. And, and, of course, and we knew that when Joy Jones sent out uh, her analysis, which, by the way, thank you for doing that because it was very thorough and it was very informative. But the, the fact of the matter is these prices are going up. They keep going up. I mean, things are out of control. The, the costs are out of control. But, um, you know, I, I really want to find a way to get this project over the line. And I'm, you know, I'm half tempted to pass the gavel to the vice chairman and make a motion similar to the one I made before. ECWA came in with a couple hundred thousand dollars. I mean, is so it's three actually 3.9 or so that we're short. Is that correct? 3.9. I believe that's, that's okay. correct, Commissioner. So Commissioner Underhill has 4.1 left in his discretionary, plus we have the 8.4 million. We're going to divide five ways. So he, so I mean, Commissioner Underhill, you could still do the Jackson Street and the sewer to septic in Brownsville. I just don't see. Look, you heard Commissioner Bender. He put half a million into his project. I put 10 percent into the library project. When when those costs go up, I mean, we're we're trying to work with you here. Um, we found a way to do the other two projects that you want. Um, you know, I, I'm here, and that's the only way to go, that, that Commissioner Barry will support it. But Commissioner Bender, it's all up to you now, because I'm about to make this motion. I mean, he doesn't want to do it. It's not his money. He doesn't want to do it. You're going to support it if I make the motion? Uh, I, Jeff, I think it's just a dangerous precedent. It's a dangerous precedent, but this is an un... I mean, this is a very unusual circumstance that we're dealing with here. Well, again, though, but I think it then falls squarely on his shoulders and not the rest of the board's. Well, I mean, I mean, that's what I'm trying to. That's what I'm trying to be clear. Is sure. that if he's not willing to step up, then it then the, it rests at his feet, not our feet. Of course, we all know that's a fact of reality. But meanwhile, back at the ranch, I'm trying to be pragmatic and get this project over the line for those citizens down there. They don't deserve this. And I will say, for the record, 
looking back on that video, there was some shenanigans with that bid. And, you know, for one bidder to come in on a $12 million project, knowing it was going to be change ordered to pieces, I, I'm, I, the board voted for wanting to pull that back for a reason, Doug. It's not just us being mean to you. It, there was something wrong with that. It smelled. And I'm glad we pulled it back. Things happen. Um, it went way up in cost. I'm trying to get it over the line, but I don't see a, I don't see a path forward if, if people are, are not going to find a way using the money that we have. Um, we don't have magic money anywhere else. And any other way you want to try and get there, uh, you're not going to have the votes to get it. So, um, I mean, I, I guess. Mr. Chairman, yes. could I maybe Please, uh, do, uh, offer, do something. offer one other thought? Uh, and, and I haven't talked to any of you uh, about this, but there, there is about $40 million uh, that, that's uncommitted so far in the Restore Pot 1 funds uh, that, that you all have selected projects for. Mm -hmm. um, this next spring, we were probably going to, uh, you know, have an, another uh, round of projects that each commissioner uh, could uh, propose a project. Uh, what, what if uh, this uh, four four point one million dollars three point nine three point nine what if, what if that was uh, a new pot one project? Well, I mean, I, I don't know. We it sounds like we don't we're under a time crunch, Chips. Don't you have to go back to Congress and get approval for that? It, it would probably take about six months, but we could phase this project. You know, it's already two contractors, two phases. We've got enough to do one of the phases. We could get started on it. Uh, while that funding comes through so so to craft a motion that would go over the line today that would be that would be put the money that we have in the project right now to work accept the bid but that that we would be taking a, a tremendous risk because what if congress came back and said you know we just don't feel like this is going to fit the bill it, it, it's a sewer to uh, a septic to sewer project stormwater okay. project that that's the types of projects that uh, are uh, definitely eligible uh, I, I don't see uh, an issue with, uh, with going down that road. Well, um, talking about the $40 million, okay, so that would be a tremendous amount for District 2. I mean, um, do Mr. we have... I mean, Mr. Know? Chairman, I mean, I, I, you know, and Chips and I hadn't talked about it, but I mean, that $40 million is, mm -hmm. is there. Is there. But there's also a tremendous amount of unfunded to complete construction of the projects that we have in the pipeline. Correct. I mean, we Correct. all, you know, we all have huge, I, I believe, I mean, I know that my construction expenses to complete the projects that I have in the pipeline are, are very, very expensive. I mean, both of mine are related to 11 Mile Creek and, and the construction on those are estimated a very, okay. a very high percentage of that 40 million. So well, it's a case, I, may, I mean, I may not even be able to complete the two that I have in there, I may not be able to to see to completion. Or you might have to even put, with my you, Porsche. Even you might have to put discretionary loss money. I don't have I don't have enough. I mean, the numbers are just huge to yeah, try yeah. to complete some of these restore projects. And and you know, I, you know, and and chips. I, I appreciate that idea. I saw it included. You, you changed the agenda item to include restore as a, as an option. Mm -hmm. I understand it's an option, but to to execute that option is going to be taking away from the rest of the board's ability to complete the projects that True. we have five, five, six years invested in already. Yeah, no, I agree. And, you know, we have another path forward. And, um, you know, I, th I, th I think it's a reasonable path. I know, you know, it, it is unprecedented. I think other things that, that I think other dynamics have been unprecedented as well. <laughs> no doubt so, about that. I mean, I don't, I don't <laughs> think it's an inappropriate way to go forward. Um, but if that's not a, something the majority of the board wants to do that's okay too so yeah that's well i, I appreciate I, chips comments i'm still not going to support that what, what i support is what i said a couple weeks ago yep. your motion from last time and i still think that's a reasonable way to go um but if that's not you know if that's not a winning vote that's okay i've lost other votes it's all right I guess. yeah most so have i i've lost a ton of them robert and then doug yeah and i would say as, as we've talked about some other money i mean there there might be other projects can be added that uh, Commissioner Underhill is thinking about. Um, you know, whatever we decide with the VP money, you can you can use it to backfill um, some of these other projects. But it's, uh, you know, it sounds like we're asking you if you're going to put forward your discretionary dollars to make this project happen. Well, I... Oh, hold on. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. 
Um, well, I think that uh, CHIPS has uh, presented a very good solution. Uh, it's 10 percent of, uh, of the remaining LOST funds that are, we already know exist. Um, so in fact, if we are looking for solutions, um, that's a very good one. So um, I, I would move that we move the item uh, in the affirmative uh, with the funding uh, for the shortfall to come from uh, the remo remaining uh, restore funds. All right, we have a motion. Is there a second? Motion dies for lack of a second. Okay, I'm going to pass the gavel to Doug. Cause Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. One second. Okay. I, I right. want to talk to Robert for a second. And I, I understand what you're saying, Robert. And, you know, I think it's hypothetically, I think it's very appropriate to try to put the onus back on, uh, on Commissioner Underhill to say that, look, if it doesn't go forward because you don't want to put this forward, then the blame is going to lie on you. That's probably reality. The perception of that blame is not going to lie there. The per perception of that blame is going to lie with the rest of us because that's going to be that's going to certainly be the narrative that goes forward. Um, which, again, I'm okay with that. But if there really is the want to complete the project, there is a way forward to complete the project with the four of us that are on the dais today. And I don't think it's inappropriate. I think it's. I understand, you know, what was said about it being unprecedented, but there's a lot of things that have been unprecedented sure. with behavior. So, um, you, Robert, you got anything else? Yeah, I mean, let's. Um, <clears throat> I mean, we, we've had a lot of grants that have come out recently. I mean, the septic to sewer that that we unexpectedly all received last week. Um, you know there are there are more dollars out there, um, you know Doug. How about how about half the difference from your discretionary? Um, I mean I'm trying to I'm trying to work with you to get this over, and knowing that there's you know that BP money sitting out there, um, you know that that you could again backfill if you needed to, so so two million from your discretionary, um, and then we try to try to to work on the rest through. Uh, another avenue, Robert. I, I have to ask you. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm surprised that you would be asking again. I mean, you and I have known each other on this dais for a long time, and you should recognize that. And, and you know, as soon as I announced that I was not going to be running for an addition for a third term, um, you know, I immediately started working on you know kind of that uh, that exit path. Um, and I, whether. You know, Commissioner Barry recognizes a, a verbal promise as being an encumbrance. It's an encumbrance in my world. Uh, asking me to break half of those instead of all of them um, is exactly the same as break all of them. So you know, I, I recognize that you're, you're trying to find a, a middle ground there. Um, you know, the easy solution is the solution that I proposed. It's only 10 percent of that 40 million that's sitting that's available. Um, 10 percent of that would be spent in at least 10 percent of it would be spent in District 2 anyway. Um, so it really doesn't take away from anything. That's a little bit of a disingenuous argument. Um, but no, I mean, I'm not going to go back on those things uh, that I said, uh, which are very important in my district. Um, you know, everybody really focuses on Perdido Key, but there's, you know, the, the Jackson Street stuff is extremely important. Uh, some of the other stormwater issues that you've heard are extremely important. The environmental issues are important. Uh, Jones Swamp, Bayou Chico. There's just a lot of things in my district that all matter, um, and all of those things are promised. So, and, and whether I've revealed them or not, in some, as if that's some sort of a criteria, uh, is a bit absurd um, because you know we're working through those issues, and, you know, especially with the with the environmental side and the park side. You know, those discussions are, are when I give my word, it means something. So. I've given my word on those things. I'm not going to back off of those things. Sure. Uh, certainly happy to spend, not really happy to, but I mean, certainly recognize that spending it out of District 2's uh, um, uh, portion of that 40 million, um, you know, okay, that, that's not a good answer, but it's a good enough answer. Um, you know, and considering that this board once incurred <laughs> encumbered 10 years worth of District 4's LOST for a project, no, yeah. <laughs> knowing full well that that commissioner was not going to be here for that period of time. So, you know, it, it's not at all unprecedented to do that with regard to the remaining restore money. Um, it is, uh, it's, you know, it would take an awful lot to think that that 4 million out of the 40 would somehow prevent uh, uh, other projects which are not uh, at risk from, hat from uh, actually getting completed. So, 
Um, no, that's that's the that's the word. I mean, it, it really doesn't change, Robert. Thank you. No, I know, but I, I think, and, and I've said this, that that 40 million, I think it does need to go towards the projects that we've already um, agreed upon and Correct. have already put money towards to, to see those to completion and that we don't get halfway through a project that was supposed to be spent on restore dollars and, and not have any money to, to complete those. And, you know, as we said, I mean, we're already seeing costs go up. Um, you know, and and I mean, I'm surprised you waited until you said you weren't going to run again to start working on the projects, is which what sounded like I heard. But um, you, you know, again, I, I'm I'm saying that that we can, if we can, if you move half, which again, you, you still have that potential BP money there that you can use for some of these other projects, um, you know, projects that are that are along uh, District Three's border um, might be able to get a little help in there. Um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm offering to see if you would you do half from your discretionary. I recognize uh, your offer. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, just to put a button on this, because there's only one path that could be possible after hearing the discussion and um, taking everything into account. So I'm going to pass this gavel over to the vice chairman so I can make a motion. I move that we move this project forward and complete it, recognize the grant money, put it to work for the citizens, Utilizing the the, sh the money, uh, the shortfall, which I believe is roughly 3.9 million, whatever the actual amount is uh, coming out of Doug's discretionary, um, with the added with the added caveat that um, when we get the 8.4 million from BP, I will be supportive of Doug's projects, um, the 1.5 million that he mentioned at the last meeting, including the Jacksons Street Complete Street and the Brownsville septic to sewer. That, that's the motion that I'll make to move this project forward. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Yeah, I'll second it. Jeff, and all of that narrative is in the motion? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah. Um, Go ahead, Commissioner. Okay. All right. So, Jeff, let's, let's do, uh, and I, I can be willing to support the $2 million from discretionary. That my motion's 3.9. I, I know. Well, and then, um, you know, I, I think we probably would be having some some of the money coming out of, of other funds that, that we can um, discuss um, as it as it moves forward. I mean, we do have um, various pots of money. We can we can see what type of other grants we can get. Um, but it, I, I would at least say it could be made whole with the with the BP money uh, when it becomes available. Um. Well, I think I think we'd have to. Do, I, I would prefer one clean vote on the, on the motion that's on the floor, and then we can we can readdress it uh, with a secondary vote. But I mean, I, we're just at a stalemate. The clock's ticking, um, in, literally and figuratively, on the project and on the wall. Um, and look, those those people don't deserve to be held hostage. I've stated my opinion. This board made a four-one vote to pull that solicitation back when it was twelve million one bidder with the change order king. Um, great guy, great businessman, but that wouldn't have been, there was no chance that would have been a $12 million project and everyone in this room knows that. It went up because it went up. It went up because we've changed the solicitation, we added stuff to it and the cost of materials went up. It would have gone up anyway, even if we would have uh, voted to accept that bid at 12 million. So for, for what it's worth, it may not have gone up as much as it went up if the solicitation was put out with as two phases with two lines yes. where people could have bid on, the way phase, we wanted one, it. on right. phase one or phase two rather than only one line for the cumulative aggregate bid. So any contractor had to put had to put the total number within their bid. They could break they broke down into the phases, but the solicitation only allowed for one top line number. Yep. Which and that was part of the reason moved. why it, that's part of the reason Which, why it, it smelled. I mean, there, that's the reason why that thing got pulled. There were too many problems with it, and you know we just don't do that. We don't do twelve million dollars single bidders. Sorry, I, you know I'm sorry. Uh, I, no regrets for that four one vote. It's unfortunate we are where we are, but uh, to say it would have just been eleven point eight million that's disingenuous. In we've seen material costs go straight up. There would have been change order after change order after change order on that project. Not unlike the Nine Mile Road four lane project, right? We've seen that thing almost double. Um, so with, with all that said, you know, there is a motion and a second on the floor, Robert. If we want to get this over the line, there's enough money to do Doug's projects. Sure. Um, we, can do, we can do the complete streets. Uh, we can do the 
septic to sewer, those are the two that I heard him mention last week. We got extra money for that, and we, we get the job done. He's obviously intransigent. He's not going to move on it. So it's up to us. And if we vote it down, if it's a 2 2, it doesn't pass. But at least we put, a, we put a ribbon on it, we put a bow on it, and we move on. Any other discussion? Commissioner, oh, I've got the floor. Uh, you, you had your line on, so I didn't know if you. Commissioner, go ahead. Um, you know, again, Doug, I'm saying if you'll, you know, do the, do the two million. Yeah, I think I recognize it. And I, okay. I, I, I understand everything that you said. Um, so we have a motion and a second on the floor. We have um, a, you, so, you've made know, a proposal. So Jeff, I'm, I'm saying if, if, if you change the motion to two, uh, you'll get my support. So you are proposing a friendly amendment? I'm proposing a friendly amendment. Okay. Commissioner, do you accept not interested, amendment? Not interested, not interested, because I'd friendly, friendly Because we lose Steve's vote. See how it works? Friend, I mean, friendly well, amendment is I don't not know. I mean, Steve, do we lose your vote if, if we go to two million as discretionary and then other funding? If you want to, if, if you want to take 2.5 okay. and allow the other 1.4 to come out of the portion of the BP that would be, would have previously been attributable to district two, that's, that's okay. Um, and, uh, the two projects that were mentioned that Mr. Underhill had mentioned are both, um, you know, they're both projects that border district three. Um, I'm not as concerned with what his, you know, with what his intent or will would be on those, but if he, uh, you know, as he's mentioned many times, he won't be here shortly. If, uh, if my dear friend from District 3 finds value in those projects and wants to bring those projects forward, we'll find a way to fund the 1 million and the 500,000 that's been, you know, perhaps verbally committed by Commissioner Underhill to those, to those people. Um, if that's something that Commissioner May wants to champion or is supportive of when it comes back, then yeah, you've got my, you know, you've got my commitment on video that I'll help you find a way to uh, to make sure that 1.5 is there for those two projects, and it'll be at the it'll be at the support of Commissioner Three from that district. Okay, Mr. And Vice Chairman, I'm prepared to amend my motion if you. So it'd be 2.5 coming from the LOS yep. from the discretionary D2, and then the the gap then coming from the uh, 8.4. Yep, from the 8.4 BP money. All right, give me give me just a second, Jeff. So. Uh, Commissioner, you're dropping your um, request for a friendly amendment to give the, uh, the commissioner an opportunity to, to represent. Yes. All right, Commissioner, if you'd like to represent your motion. Absolutely, okay, so I move the project forward, um, utilizing 2.5 million uh, from Commissioner Underhill's discretionary local option sales tax funds uh, and 1.4 or whatever the actual amount is to make it the 3.9 um, from the BP uh, oil spill money, uh, the 8.4 million that we got. That's did, my motion. Did you want to restate the promises with regard to the other two projects? Yeah, and absolutely. As Commissioner Barry alluded to, and as I alluded to previously, um, we will give consideration to those additional two projects um, when they come forward. That's my motion. Is that a clear motion? Thanks. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Like the second stands. Second stands. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Are we, st are we still up? Uh, uh, item passes 4-1 with Commissioner May in dissent. Um, I'm sorry, with Commissioner Underhill in dissent. Uh, at this time, I'm re returning the uh, gavel to the chairman. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Okay, moving forward now, we're going to car three for discussion number two. Yeah, sixteen. Yeah, 16 yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. We need to double back to sixteen. Okay. All right. We are on sixteen, and do we have speakers? Nope. Oh, Commissioner Barry, you had asked to hold yeah, that. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, the two hundred thousand that's referenced here was, you know, was allocated in this in the spreadsheet for this for this project. Um, what and I'm, you know, it's not uh, you know, it's clearly not my district, 
but it's, um, um, I don't have an issue with the project itself. That's not the reason for the discussion. But what we're looking at awarding is the, is the engineering contract and um, what my wish would be that we would go through a real procurement for the, uh, for the engineering contract. The way that this was done, it was, uh, we just you know, basically took all the pool of eligible firms that, were, that are on our continuing contract, um, selected three from there, from those three, select, ranked them, and uh, the narrative given for the number one firm was simply based on the workload. Huh. Um, that's not enough of a narrative to me to provide the rationale for why we're awarding, uh, why we're going to award a contract to somebody. It's 46,000, so I mean, it's under 50,000. Legally, you know, it can, it can be done this way, but it's close enough to 50 that I think we should go through a real procurement for the uh, professional services on this rather than just using our continuing contract. Um, you know, there's also the, that 46 or so, 47,000 that we're looking at, you know, is well over the estimated at the beginning of the, uh, at the beginning of this procurement, we estimated the design to be 35,000. So we're well over that estimate, which does raise some concerns as far as how much over the 135,000 that, I'm sorry, the 165,000 estimated for construction, we had allocated out of the 200, 130, 165 for construction, 35 for engineering. We're 30% plus over on the engineering side. How well have we estimated the construction side and are we gonna end up having to come back to the board for more funds more that money. have not been allocated? The 200,000 was allocated. So it, it does raise some future concerns, but for the immediate concern, I'd just like to, to drop the item, go out for a real procurement where we uh, rank the firms based on the responses that they give about the project itself, their expertise about the area. Um, the only letter in the backup related to the uh, contract award and the proposal for it was prepared after they were notified and negotiated with to do the work rather than anyone looking at the project ahead of time. So no, I, I tend to agree with you, Commissioner Barry, but um, obviously uh, Commissioner Underhill has his light on, so do you want to weigh in on that before we drop it? Yes, please. Uh, you're, you're recognized. Mr. Administrator, are you familiar with this project? Not intimately, no. Okay. Um, are you familiar with the practice that, or the process that uh, got us to this point? And I am. So it's why did we use this a, practice and not use? It's an abbreviated selection process. It's well within our procurement policies and procedures. And it's a uh, it's a effort to streamline and, and shorten the, the length of time it takes to bring a project to fruition, and in design. Okay, so it's a practice that we utilize uh, throughout the county. Yes. And how long have we been doing that practice? Quite some years. Okay. And that streamline process does that has that uh, so in your opinion that that allows things to get done faster? Does it also does sure. it increase or decrease costs, or more or less the same? I don't think it increases the cost. Okay. Then if you, if this item is dropped and put out for a, uh, a, for a bidding, do you anticipate that this would come back uh, at same price, lower price, higher price? I probably somewhere in the same neighborhood, I would imagine. Uh, you would have the length, you know, you'd advertise for 30 days, put an RFP out, advertise for 30 days, take the proposals, listen to the proposals, bring the short list, rank, list of proposals, and then bring a, a recommendation to the board. So okay. it would, the main uh, impact is the length of time. Well, certainly the reason that we have the streamlined process uh, is for these smaller projects and the projects that are really just kind of, uh, kind of cookie cutter to some extent. Um, it is a good business practice. It is a business practice we've engaged in for a long period of time. Uh, I would be opposed to dropping it and going through the long protracted process of doing of the bidding um, when there really is very is, is nothing to be gained by it. Um, if there is anything to be gained by it, uh, it might come in uh, slightly less. But as you're saying, same ballpark. Uh, it has at least as much an opportunity to come in more. Um, and cost more and take more time. Uh, precisely the two things that people complain about in government at all times. So I'm opposed to dropping the item. I believe we should uh, should take the item as, as it is. Commissioner Barry, you recognize? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, I, I would move that we drop the item, ask him to go through the uh, go through the RFP process with an expedited um, expedited uh, period of time, 14 days, 
you know, ask for 14 days in the proposal. It's not, it is not, as, as was alluded to, it's not a huge project, but um, I'd still like to be awarding work based on some narrative that's more than the firm doesn't have much work right now. That's right. not, it's, this, this may have predated Commissioner Underhill's service with Commissioner May and I, but it is something that, um, that we had numerous discussions about when he and I were first uh, elected about the way that engineering contracts were, were handed out. There were, um, you know, in my opinion, there were real issues with the way that was done and um, the narrative of uh, something being awarded now just based on the fact that the firm is not very busy is not a, uh, is not something I'm, uh, I think is the way that we should be awarding contracts. Absolutely. All right. So that's, that's my motion, but doing the expedited procurement of only 14 days. Okay. We have a motion. Yeah, and Jeff, I'll second the motion. And, yeah, we have a motion know, and second. For, for my opinion, you know, even the previous item, you know, I think you put it out to bid until you get the best price. I mean, and if, if you can save by putting it back out, you put it back out. I mean, I, I, still, I have heartburn about the $3 million, as everyone knows, but you know, expedite it and do the project. But, you know, and then I would hope that we could expedite it and get it done as quick as possible. Is this not a project you could do in-house? No, sir, we, we can't do this project in house. Okay. All right. All right. Motion and second, please vote. It, I I don't see it. Oh, here it comes. Okay, so the vote uh, passes three to one with Commissioner Underhill in dissent. That was uh, Commissioner Barry's motion to drop and, and resolicit expedited. So, okay, moving forward now, uh, I believe that we are all done with that portion. We're going on to discussion, and we do have speakers for car three, uh, number one. Um, would the board be interested in hearing the speakers first? Speakers first. I'd be interested in hearing the speakers first. We have two speakers. Yeah, on. Go okay. Um, Melissa Pino, you're up first. Thank you, Chairman Bergash, and thank you, Escambia County Board of Commissioners, for funding that project. It's so important. The dividends are going to be enormous. So many other projects rely on it. Really grateful to you guys for thank sticking you. with it and finding a way. Um, I didn't have a lot of chance to look at the packet. I think that this is the one page of documentation on the packet for this uh, item. I could have missed it somewhere else if something fell out of order. I did every search imaginable in a short amount of time. Can I get some confirmation? Is this the acreage across from Commissioner Underhill's house? Um, Tim, can you come forward? Uh, wait, can, can you stop can you her? Stop my time? Yeah, stop her time, <laughs> Thank please. You. Tim, will you come forward and just explain where this is? Because uh, I think the backup, I don't know if it had a map in there. I didn't, I, was there a map inside the, the backup? It, it did not. Okay. Um, and it's, was, the way it was written was more to let the board know that this is something that may be coming forward to them in the future. Okay. Um, it's, it's subject to a lot of, um, you know, a lot of moving parts. Sure. And so it's, but it's, it's one of those, it's a, there's a, you know, a potential private transaction. And so it was left this way to allow that uh, transaction to potentially occur. Sure. But let me ask you this. Um, so conceptually approve the expenditure of a million dollars in uh, Perdido Key Habitat Conservation Plan restricted funds. Um, I, I mean, if you're going to expend that, those funds, that would still have to come back here. You're just absolutely. It, you're just, it, it, so what I'm, is the what is the actual ask in real well, language? That's being negotiated. Okay. And being, so the it's it's the max dollar figure is up to a million. Okay. Part of it depends on in this transaction how the details work out to okay. see what what the county might be able or might need to do to help facilitate it to get it acquired uh, for benefit of habitat conservation on the okay team. um and and i i get why folks because i mean i know it's kind of it was kind of vague the language um and if we spend the million dollars in in beach mouse money for lack of a better word that severely limits what we could do with that property if we for instance were to, to fund half of it with local option sales tax couldn't we find some benefit in that property perhaps some additional parking 
with a path or a walk over to the to the so multi-use path? There, there, there's possibilities, and we can. It, it's kind of once I get the final deal is when then I'll come to the board with here's the the, the formal sure. proposal. I, I want to be supportive. I want to be supportive. Yeah. Obviously, anything we can do to you know to conserve habitat and provide more parking out there for mm -hmm. the day visitors to use the, the multi-use path. I mean, uh, I want to be supportive, but I, I don't necessarily want to support a, the full amount with the beach mouse money because then that forecloses the opportunity of us to build parking and a walkway. W or would that pretty much foreclose it if we didn't use local option sales tax money? If there's funding other than habitat conservation fund monies in it, it would open doors for other potential uses. Including um, parking for additional parking for the multi-use path, p potentially. It, it could. It would also require that property would come through the normal HCP permit sure. process, oh, yeah. trigger all the same yeah, yeah, fees. Yeah. So it wouldn't be easy. We'd like beach access four, right? We'd have to go through the all the, pro the whole process. Yes, it, it'd be a little more rigorous than what happened with beach access four. But um, if we bought it all with the beach mouse money, it's then all there would be is some passive recreation, probably a series of boardwalks on it for people to enjoy. And no parking. Correct. Yeah, so that's, I think that's the question. Melissa, did you want to? But wanna... Jeff, Jeff, I got a question. I mean, b b would you be sending money back? What do you mean? The beach yeah. mouse money? I mean, if you No, no, it's, it's it in a fund. No, sir. It's in it's, a fund. It's, uh, so the beach mouse money, um, when people are developing out there, um, there's a series of fees that they have to pay to develop. And so the county is in receipt of funds that have generated over time associated with Okay, uh, that's yeah. I thought you were talking about federal grant money because nope. I'm just against sending money back. I'm against sending no, but grant it's, money it's, back. It's, I can also um, let the board know that this has been coordinated with U.S. Fish and Wildlife and they're supportive of this acquisition. It, with this structure. So you're trying to use another pot of money Jeff, to give you more flexibility for your Absolutely. Project. Well, and, 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 and what I'm hearing from, from Tim is Nothing's final, but I, the only thing is I, I would be, I'd be more amenable to a half million dollar figure um, with the potential of using a half million, maybe even in my discretionary, if it gets us parking. One of the things I hear out there is there's no parking. So we're building this beautiful multi-use path and there's no place for day visitors to park. So if we, if we can structure the deal differently and get parking, I think that makes a lot more sense taking the long view. That's, how many spaces can you get out there? Yeah, how many spaces could we get for a half? If, it, in all reality, it's going to depend on what this, the, the final negotiation looks like, because I don't know how many acres uh, we'll ultimately be committing to. Sure. Um, well, but why are we talking about money? If we, Jeff, yeah, I, you I, know, I what? Know, yeah. what? Yeah. Why don't we negotiate the deal, figure out what it costs, and, and figure out what do you get? And bring it back when it's a little more, you know. Well, well, part of it is it's it's what time it's, sensitive. It's, well, it's it's time sensitive in, in that um, the property owner is expecting to close this calendar year. Okay. And so there's just simply not enough time to bring you a full deal ahead of time. And I didn't want to, you know, start moving down a, a, a path of potentially committing. Well, I appreciate board. you bringing it for discussion. But, but I understand what you're saying, Tim. But are we committing to a project not knowing the scope, but at acknowledging a price without the scope? Because it, what it, I'm hearing, the scope is going to change. Well, it, what I'm saying is, is it could be up to a million dollars. It may only be, a, you know, 200000 It Part of it oh. is, is it's going to depend on what their deal ends up with, but I do know at the end there'll be a delta. And so it, that delta is what I'm gonna ask the board in the future uh, okay. based on appraised values to. Uh, so this input is coming from who on what the project's gonna look like, the scope? I mean, are you talking to the commissioner of that district? Are you talking to residents or? It, it's, it's, well, what, what's happening is there's uh, one person on the key that's looking to make this acquisition for mitigation property. And, and he's not gonna need all of the property for mitigation. And so the, the, the up to $1 million would be just ultimately the remainder of that purchase price. And sure. we're moving because one resident is requesting this? Yes. It's, it's, I don't know. I, mean, the answer, I, I, no, I'm not. No. I think that's, I mean, y'all telling me to approve a $1 million, don't know what the scope is, and one person requested it. Yeah. It just doesn't sound yeah. like stewardship to me. Yeah, there's a lot of meat on the bone. So I think, I think this one might have to be brought back. But I mean, obviously, you know, I don't know, Doug. Doug, you want to speak to it? You're recognized. The speaker still has two eight, two eighteen. You want to wait till he talks, or you want to come back now? The speaker should. The speaker okay. should have. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't recognize you had a speaker. All right, Melissa, you're. you're I apologize, Melissa. I'd, I'd forgotten that you were. We kind of we kind of jumped into a side. Oh, yeah. I apologize. The, this is perfect, Commissioner May, because you guys ain't heard nothing yet. Okay, and at, at some point, Commissioner Bergash, we need like 
nine months for us to get you caught up on everything that he's been running down there in Perdido <laughs> Key. The parking is going to be across the street from his place after he moves his home homestead up to the farm in Cantonment okay, and, he, it, and he turns his item, property please. into a jet ski destination. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing that I want to underline is Commissioner Underhill recused himself on the original vote to set this property aside in conservation to begin with. Grover ran this, not Commissioner Underhill. It's been a long time since I looked at the forms and I'm calling this from memory. It seems like there was a box checked for proximity when they killed the condo project that was supposed to start development across the street. A uh, little wetlands action on Doug's property and the property next door, and then whoop, it's preservation, great. But we've been digging on that project for years, waiting for the moment to see what the plans for it were. There's a reason the multi-use path starts in front of Doug's house, okay? So they don't need parking, because the parking is gonna be at Commissioner Underhill's house. That's why he already started with his illegal throwing down of gravel that he got cited from code to turn his front house of his parcel into a parking lot. This project was where it all started with the grand plan that he has been doing for seven years to bring all of these different strands together to make a multi-use path that from his block goes down to the Gulf for golf carts and mm, maybe those little scooters that Jonathan drives around on and pulls the jet <laughs> skis on. This is what this is, gentlemen, but the legal question of how Commissioner Underhill can bring this and then vote on it when he recused himself from the very beginning by saying he didn't have the legal right to vote on it, this is why you have to ask Mr. Marino to give you guys a report of all of his projects. You need a status report on what's on the books, what's not on the books, and where all the money is coming from, and then I'll tell you where some of the other off-book right. stuff is, Thank Commissioner you. Bergash. Thank you. Okay, Tim, you want to jump into, did you want to <laughs> add something to that? Uh, if, if I could. Yeah, you're let me, let me go ahead and back up. Okay. <laughs> so the, the acquisition of this property has been a priority since 2004. Okay. Um, the county in previous grants had has made attempts uh, with the owner to purchase it and each time um, we we've, we've failed mostly because um, in just purchasing directly from the county it takes us six to eight months typically to do one sure. of these transactions sure what has happened now and and what's being proposed this is a staff driven concept is uh, this piece is critical linkage between Perdita Key State Park and other conservation lands held by the county we don't need the entire parcel to meet our conservation needs, uh, but we have an opportunity where uh, there is an existing landowner out there who's, who's secured a deal to purchase it and will not need all of the property for mitigation. And so the, the request is, is just conceptually uh, that the county look at being able to spend up to a million dollars based on appraisals mm -hmm. So no, no extra funds necessary to complete this and really get the last piece of the jigsaw that, that I need for land preservation on the key. Okay. No, I mean, I think conceptually, I think you, the board supports it, but it's just so opaque and it's, there's just a lack of detail here that we and really, a million dollars is a lot of money. And if it comes from one pot that severely restricts the um, utility of that property for so, the entire county, um, and, and the guys that, that drive from Cantoma and Beulah, to want to go to the beaches out there. And, uh, and the part I would like to bring out is the funding source. And it's we, in, in, on a future transaction, once we have all the details, then we can have a conversation with the board on how you would, you know, if you'd like to split the funding. Yeah, I, and I think as but, long as we're as long as long we're having that open dialogue about it's not locked in, because what I wouldn't want is for you to come back and say, here's the contract and it's a million dollars all from Beach Mouse money and you will never use it for anything else, uh, no parking allowed. If you come back and say, look, we owe a million, but how about we, you know, 60%, 40%, we can get some, you know, 20 spots, you know, uh, that's that's the kind of thing. Jeff, that who's I, the that person I, trying to buy this? I believe, well, are you, are we at liberty to say, or is there? You said one person, when we're at liberty, we said we're going to a million dollars, so one person requested. I mean, yeah, it's, um, it's public. I don't know the person's name. It's not going to be a secret if no, they're going to buy it's, it's land not. from us. It, it, 
Yeah, yeah, I, I think I think there's a. Well, I, mean, I don't care. You don't have yeah, to say. It. I don't care. You don't have to say it. I mean, but it's not going to be. You're not going to take public dollars and have a ghost buyer. It's, yeah, absolutely. I, mean, I don't know it's, how that works. So, you know, once again, this is restricted funds meant to be expended on key. Sure. Well, and, and so, and it's and it's in court. Uh, this has been coordinated with US, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, who's the other purse strings holder uh, of these funds with the county. And it, it's one of those. I just wanted to make sure. Um, since the this transaction is expected to take place still this calendar year, mm -hmm. um, that that I had conceptual. Uh, as long as you're not locking down that it we're, can't. We're not. It's, yeah. You. It's, you it's, it's, I tell you what. Here's the way you get my support. Um, you bring back a proposal. Here's the dollar amount that we need, and here's some potential funding sources, um, and not 100% beach mouse money, so that it forecloses any possible public utility of that property. Then I think you you definitely yeah, have my support. Right. What's what's intended is that sometime early next year there would be a closing with the new owner for whatever the county portion of the land would be. Okay. And and there would be time for us to go ahead and decide what are, are the appropriate funding sources. Sure. And you know meet meet both the you know the okay. needs of people and the mouse. Commissioner Underhill, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hey, Tim, when was the first time you contacted me about this? Uh, earlier this week. Okay. So you and I had not spoken about this before earlier this week. That is correct. Okay. Did I have anything to do with putting this deal together? No. Are you sure? 100% certain of that? Yes, sir. Okay. It must be a f crazy special kind of hell to have me in your head all the time. So I'm going to have to address some of these things. <laughs> the bike path does not begin or end at my house. I live in the middle of River Road. The bike path is, goes uh, you know, a mile or so either direction. Um, I was in close proximity to Mr. Dias's uh, resort that he was trying to build, and that's the reason that I had to uh, uh, recuse myself from this. I am not in close proximity to this purchase, therefore I do not need to recuse myself from this. Um, geez, what else was there, Tim? I forgot some of that stuff. Um, eh, never mind, it doesn't matter. Anyway, all of that stuff was just pure BS. Um, this has nothing to do, like really like 90% of the stuff we do up here, it doesn't actually have anything to do with me. <laughs> Doesn't, it just doesn't. Um, yeah, we purchased the Magnolia West property when was that? The Mag West? 2012. 2012, we purchased Mag West. That preceded my time on the board. The Habitat Conservation Plan requires us to purchase and acquire uh, property. Um, we've got the Mag West, which is directly, which connects to this to the uh, to the east, correct? Yes, sir. And then the county, uh, the state owns the property on the other side of, the, of River Road, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so this is a, it's a unique opportunity to purchase a piece of property uh, that continues the east-west migration paths for the uh, beach mouse. Uh, that's kind of important. That's important to the HCP. Um, that's what this money is meant for. Um, the issue that's what's been placed before us is actually the kind of the same way that, that, that Tim has had to use money before. Um, and really, he doesn't want to go and negotiate in bad faith and if he doesn't have money in his pocket or if he doesn't have money out, he, he can't encumber money, only we can. Mm -hmm. So he's saying that he wants us to be able to encumber money um, or, or so that he can negotiate in honest faith. Is that, is that pretty much what's going on here, Tim? So other than encumber, it's, uh, it's really, it's what I want to do is, you know, in good faith, make sure the board is aware that this is going on. Sure. And, and it's because of timing, um, the, the, the potential person we'd be working with will close on the property before we're able to, I'm able to get you the full details of what the transaction may look like on a county side. Now, you and can communicate with each commissioner individually and give them much greater details, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So, the, so there's no reason, I mean, obviously, you want to you keep your cards close to your chest as you're negotiating purchases in terms of publicly. Um, but you're able to communicate with every commissioner at their discretion any details about this deal, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So. And and also um, anything that you would do, it'd be subject to our approval. So if you absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I, um, I just didn't want to surprise the board in the future. No, and I appreciate that, Tim. Uh, we have one more speaker, Kevin Wade. You're recognized. And then we'll figure out what we're going to do with this item. We want this project. We citizens are tired of seeing lands purchased with a do not touch. Beach is closed. Kevin Wade, 413 Southeast Boblets. 
yeah, we want this project. And we're curious about what project was actually recused on. Um, you know, uh, if this land is the land that I think it is, there's been neighborhood kids that have used this for decades as motocross or cycle cross, something along that line. Occasionally people would camp there. There's a lot of people that would like to set up a campground to be near the conservation lands. Um, I'm one of the people that would be happy to have some parking near the multi-use path, you know? Uh, all the renderings that I remember from uh, the master plan and so on showed elevated multi-use path with little campsites along it, little observation decks, but you know, we live here because we like the area. We like being able to walk around on the land and see the beaches and actually be there on the trails. You know, oh, I moved away from Muir Woods. I don't want to walk in a forest on an elevated path with guardrails nearly my height. Oh, I don't think there's a lot of kids that really like Muir Woods because all right, to them, it's like a cattle flume. They don't get to see the big trees except from looking straight up at them. There's a lot out there in Perdido Key that is unique, should be unique, should stay unique. Oh, but this seems like the, 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 very, the very crux of soul. <laughs> And over and over again, we don't want to hear sole procurements. And just one person bringing something? I, I trust him, trust staff. Uh, after stumbling into Heron's walk and speaking to the people there and the president of the Homeowners Association and learning about the shenanigans of a floating bridge over the uh, protected water water area or wetlands that they didn't know about but it was getting rammed through so someone could develop some land near there and this seems like taken away from the citizens thank you mr wade Okay, this is a discussion item, so, you know, uh, the chair would entertain a motion if there's one to be made or else I think uh, Tim pro probably pretty much knows that there's going to be some general support based on, d depending upon which funding source and what utility the property brings. Yeah, Doug, you recognize. Uh, move the item as presented with the uh, change uh, proposed by you that uh, the initial, that, that if in fact this goes to full purchase, um, that, uh, that other than HCP funds also be used for the acquisition of the property. I can support that. I'll second that motion. Yep. I mean, I, I'm I don't, sure Barry. Yeah. Discussion? I, mean, I don't think it's necessary. The the board's made the comments that we've made that we've made for the discussion. I don't, I don't think it's necessary to do anything. Um, <clears throat> Commissioner Bagash, um, my comments, are, you know, would kind of be like yours. Hypothetically, okay. I mean, uh, but I, there's one page in the backup. I mean, you know, exactly. I, mean, I, I don't see any. And, and I understand there's a reason for that. And, you know, perhaps Tim didn't even have to bring it to the board today. He could negotiate a contract, bring the contract to the board, and then we could fully vet the financials of the contract. But, you know, because Tim is a, uh, you know, a, a good person and a good public servant, he's trying to have his conversations with a private party in good faith that the board, generally speaking, is aware of the attempted acquisition. So I think that's been accomplished. Um, but the business part of it, I mean, I don't want to take a vote on something saying I'm going to support it and then when we see the details of what we're actually acquiring and how much we're going to be able to do with it, then, then it's like I'm, you know, going back on something I previously supported. Well, I supported it because I only had, I mean, I didn't have very much information. Right. Um, hypothetically, I mean, I, I understand what those funds can be used for. That's all they can be used for and, and, and I get that and if, if we want to make a, a little bit of a, a marriage of some other funds to maybe have some of the utility on the acquisition, then, then I'm open-minded to that as well, but I'd, I'd rather not take action today. 
Okay. Time to as far as a vote. No. Commissioner Bender, do you agree? Okay. Commissioner May, any thoughts on that? No. I'm not okay. Uh, then uh, question. Commissioner. Yes. Question, Tim. Do you, the board discussion um, does that achieve the objectives that you need to be able to go forward and negotiate in good faith? Yes, sir. Okay. I rescind the motion. All right. So that item's disposed Start of. For motion. The motion. Yeah. Motion's been retracted, so it dies. Um, okay, we're gonna go now to number two. Uh, actually, the chair would entertain a motion on the balance. We have no more speakers. The balance of these are discretionary allocations from each of our um, funds. Uh, so um, the chair would entertain a motion on those. I, I don't know, I, I have two add-ons. Yeah. I don't know if she turned them in, are they apart? Are they, are they did you, under Did this? you get them yet, Madam Clerk? So, Mr. Chairman, to be clear, you're entertaining a motion on car three, two, and all add on items from commissioners discretionary uh, funds and commissioner Bender's travel yes yeah that. I'll make that motion then uh, okay let's hear commissioner May you, you said you might be coming down yeah I do so I think and, I'm and am I registered instead of, uh, am I registered Audrey yeah yeah, yeah. all right so it's not it's just because it's not just my travel it's, it's board's attorney every everybody that was listed and, yes. and, 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 and for point of clarification we should put that this should have already been done and so because this is not an add-on it's a housekeeping item correct that should have been added a part of, part of the budget yeah i mean we shouldn't have to do that that shouldn't be an add-on it should have been it should have been brought forward in october so. yeah it should have been already done be that as it may we're, we're bringing it today is that motion still clear yeah I and and that's fine, Jeff. I just wanted to be with, with Commissioner. Randy. That's not an add-on that someone's doing some outside travel. Uh, this is the fact meetings. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so there's a motion and a second to approve that, uh, the travel and all the um, discretionary uh, outlays from our uh, funds. From the clerk's office, can I, can, I'm sorry, which, because we just, I think we got four items here that we're taking. Yes, which sir. We have car three, two. We have Commissioner May's two discretionary add-on items and Commissioner's add-on items. Commissioner Bender's add on item concerning out of travel for all parties. I, I, I misspoke. It was not just specifically for him, but for everyone. Do you Copy have that. my two add on? Yeah, 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 they're, they're in there. We're in there. Okay. That's part of the motion. All right. Uh, any second? Further? Okay, we got a motion. A second. Second. Please vote. Okay, those items passed unanimously. We move on to the county attorney's report. Allison, you're recognized. I have just one item. This is at the request of Commissioner Barry related to two appropriations requests from Representative Salzman. And I want to take the moment to uh, recognize uh, Debbie Malsberger here. She's here from uh, Representative Salzman's office. Would you like to address the board and uh, any of these items? You don't have to. Okay, never mind. And then did we get the, did we get the third item added on here for the pedestrian bridge? That's that was previously taken. That okay, was we got added that to the discussion area rather okay. than the attorney's area. All right, very good. So uh, the chair would entertain a motion on the county attorney's report. Move county attorney's report A through C. Okay, we have a motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Do we have discussion on these items? Any further discussion, Stephen? Oh, no, thank you. Lumen, your light's on? Uh, I apologize, Mr. Chairman. Okay, all right, please vote. All right, gentlemen, county attorney's report passes unanimously. Uh, items added to the agenda, we've already disposed of those. Um, any announcements, anything for the, for the good of the whole? Anything else, Wes? No. All right, we're adjourned. Delana, do you have stuff for, oh yeah, okay. I'm here.